red and white have earned national recognition, including All-American Ted Brown. He dazzled Wolfpack fans in the 70s. Today, he'll join us live. The Clemson Tigers had a list of four ACC teams still unbeaten. We'll have highlights of last week's big games. Today, Chucky Burnett leaves North Carolina against North Carolina State. We'll preview it on ACC Football Today. JP Sports presents ACC Football Today with Mike Hogwood. A complete look at college football in the Atlantic Coast Conference and around the nation. Brought to you by Southern National Bank the place for tax advantage loans. And by Delta, the airline of ACC country. We love to fly, and it shows. Hello, everybody, and welcome to ACC Football Today. I'm Mike Hogwood. We're coming to you from the Weisinger Brown Athletic Facility on the campus of North Carolina State. This is the home of current Wolfpack athletes. This is also the home of a lot of memories of great athletes in days gone by here at NC State. Our Exxon ACC Game of the Week today is North Carolina State and North Carolina. NC State has picked this day to officially celebrate 100 consecutive years of football. There have been a lot of great players who have made up that rich wolf pack tradition over the last 100 years. You know, the game has changed a lot since that first day and that first team. But one thing has remained the same, and that is that wolf pack football has provided plenty of excitement for its fans. The date was March 12, 1892, when North Carolina State, then known as the North Carolina School of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts, began 100 years of Wolfpack excitement as the Aggies played and won their very first football game in school history. Since then, there have been many changes in Wolfpack football and in the sport itself. In 1892, touchdowns only counted five points, and the first school colors were, believe it or not, pink and blue. The average team weight was only 125 pounds, and since then there have been 30 different head coaches written in the Wolfpack history books. In 1910, the A&M Aggies defeated BPI 5-3 in what was then called the greatest game ever played in the South. This created enough excitement to establish a $2 season ticket fee for the four home games played in the 1911 season. North Carolina A&M won the South Atlantic Championship in 1910, 1913, and 1919, which began the winning road to success for North Carolina State Wolfpack football. Roman Gabriel was just one of many great athletes to wear the red and white of the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Gabriel's number 18 has been retired. He was a great quarterback in the early 60s, won ACC Player of the Year twice. Two other players have had their jerseys retired here at North Carolina State. Number 51, Jim Richter, a great center. And Ted Brown, number 23, what a running back he was in the mid-70s. Other great names, the, the Bucky Twins, Stan Fritz, Willie Burden, a super running back. There have been some great coaches here, too. Earl Edwards for 17 years, Lou Holtz, Bo Ryan. But now it's the Dick Sheridan era, and that tradition of excellence continues to roll on. of North Carolina State football has brought on all the excitement that a fan could dream of. There were historical moments in the early years, such as tackle John Ripple going down as the first state Walter Camp All-American. But unlike the good old days, it's time to throw away the nose guards and strap on the helmet. It's time for Wolfpack 20th Century Football. Carolina State is now known for its devastating hits and quickness. Unlike the year 1892, these players have speed, and they weigh up to 285 pounds. The style of football that keeps fans howling for more. One of the most exciting moments was in 1986, when Danny Peoples caught this Hail Mary pass from Eric Kramer with no time on the clock to push State over the Gamecocks, 23 to 22. I had to be carried off the field because I was so winded from running around and jumping. The motion is unbelievable. You know, you, you dream about doing something like that all, all the time. Dick Sheridan, the 30th head coach in NC State history, has guided the Wolfpack to four bowl games in the last five years. 
This 75-yard touchdown catch by Danny Peebles helped the Wolfpack defeat Iowa 28-23 in the memorable 1988 Peach Bowl. In the 1990 All-American Bowl, the Wolfpack battled Southern Mississippi down to the wire. Another great moment in football history as State slid to a 31-27 victory. Many exciting moments have filled the Wolfpack memory book. 100 years of excellence, just the beginning of what's yet to come. North Carolina State will try to continue that tradition of excellence in just a few minutes as they prepare to kick off against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. We'll be back down on the field at Carter-Finley Stadium, and we'll have some highlights from last week in ACC action as ACC Football Today continues. Fans are beginning to fill the seats here in Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're just a couple of minutes away from kickoff of our Exxon ACC Game of the Week, North Carolina and North Carolina State. We think this matchup today is going to prove to be another great battle between two old rivals. You know, it's been a pretty successful season for Atlantic Coast Conference teams so far. We've still got four teams without a loss. Let's take a moment now and take you back one week and show you some highlights around the ACC. Clemson, South Carolina Memorial Stadium, otherwise known as Death Valley. And the Clemson Tigers ranked in the top 10, showed why they're there. Seven out of 12 for Deshaun Cameron. One touchdown, this pass to Richard Smith. Good for six points for the Clemson Tigers. There are a number of young players who are making their mark on this Clemson football team. One of them on special teams, Tim Jones, number 56, comes up with a big block here and a first down for the Tiger offense. There's a big stable of running backs for Clemson. One of them is Rudy Harris. Breaks three tackles here on his way to the end zone for Clemson. It was a great day for the Orange. They win it 37-7. It was a great night for the Duke offense against Colgate. They were shiny and bright as that offense brushed by the Colgate defense. Aaron Shaw on the receiving end of a David Brown pass. Randy Cuthbert is still out. One guy who's filling in fine is Leroy Gallman, 81 yards. And this run for a Duke touchdown and six points. The Blue Devil defense played well. Six sacks. Jeff Smith on the sack here. Dave Wafel right behind him. But it was a costly night. Scott Yeomans, the nose guard, lost for the season with a broken ankle. Final score, 42 to 14. Bird Stadium College Park, it's the Mountaineers and the Terrapins. West Virginia and Maryland, John Kaleo gets the start at quarterback. He only completed one pass on the day, but he made it count. Kaleo throws out in the flat to Richie Harris. Now watch Harris run, 35 yards for a Maryland touchdown. Unfortunately, this was the only time Maryland was able to make it in the end zone all day. Adrian Merrill, 141 yards rushing to lead West Virginia. The air attack was awesome as well. And the final score, 37 to 7. On the banks of the Hudson, Norman Schwarzkopf on to inspire the Army against North Carolina. But the Tar Heels inspired by the return of Natron Means, 94 yards and a touchdown. And the defense of Tommy Thigpen, a big fourth down stop in the fourth quarter for the Tar Heels. Chucky Burnett had a good day at quarterback. Here he connects with Corey Holiday. Six points for North Carolina and a Tar Heel victory. 20 to 12, the final score. That brings us to our Lowe's play of the week. Watch quarterback Richard Moncrief of Clemson. He muffs the pitch out, but on first bounce, Rodney Blunt comes up with it and turns it into positive yardage. A big first down for the Clemson Tigers. And Rodney Blunt will be trying to make some plays like that. A big game, as we said, down in Clemson. Clemson and Georgia Tech. We'll be talking more about that as our show progresses. Clemson playing their first ACC game today. Let's take a look at the standings. You'll see that North Carolina State, one of those teams that already has an ACC win. Georgia Tech and Clemson, again, a big game. Maryland with a win. North Carolina playing its first game right here today. Duke will be playing its first game against Virginia today. Wake Forest tries to get back on a winning track at Northwestern. And... Virginia 0 and 2 they've dug a hole for themselves early we've talked on this program a lot about the national recognition the ACC has achieved this year 
it's starting to show up in the polls. Let's take a look at the USA Today. Some of the teams are in the top 25. Of course, Florida State is number one. Then you've got Clemson also in the top five. Georgia Tech and NC State are in the top 25. In the AP poll, North Carolina showed up at number 23 this week. Well, you can't have great teams without great players. Let's take the time now and check out our ACC Players of the Week. In North Carolina's big win over Army, center Randall Parsons opened up the holes. Linebacker Tommy Thigpen shut him down. What a game quarterback Sean Jones had leading Georgia Tech to a victory over Virginia. And how about Kevin Peoples on defense? 12 tackles, one tackle for a loss. Bobby Goodman saw a nightmare when he saw number 46, but Peoples is out of today's game against Clemson. Jimmy Lincoln is the rookie of the week. He set a Georgia Tech freshman rushing record with 229 yards. There's still a lot more to come on ACC football today. We'll be talking with our game announcers, Steve Martin and Jack Corrigan, and we're going to be talking defense. So hang around. We'll be right back. Mike Hogwood back with you on ACC football today. You're looking at what is soon to be a packed house here at Carter Finley Stadium as we get ready for North Carolina and North Carolina State. You know, we often talk about the offensive stars around the league and what they mean to their teams. But the coaches will tell you the games are won on defense. Let's take a look at some of the league's defensive leaders. And we'll start out with the leading tackler. That's Tommy Thigpen of North Carolina, followed up by Mike Jermalowicz, another great linebacker. He is from Maryland. And as we move on through our defensive statistics, quarterback sacks, look at Marco Coleman and Coleman Rudolph of Georgia Tech. They are having great seasons. <laughs> Coleman and Rudolph continue to lead the tackle for loss column. Wayne Simmons and Rob Bodine of Clemson. That should be a great matchup as the defenses get ready for that game. Well, the defenses are ready for this game. So are our game announcers. And let's talk defense with them. Steve Martin and Jack Corrigan. Gentlemen, how about the defenses for today's game? I think the defenses for today's game, especially North Carolina, there's been a story all throughout the preseason. It's not so much, Jack, who's here, but who isn't here. And North Carolina's got a big gap in the middle to solve. Well, Dwight Hollier, their all-conference linebacker, and quite clearly the heart and soul of that Carolina defense. An off-season foot injury is still not back. Probably will not be back for a couple of more weeks. So you can't ever overcome that kind of loss. The problem gets complicated in that Tommy Thigpen has to do more things or different things, I should say, than he did previously. As those numbers that Mike talked about showed, he has had a great start to this 91 season, but you just can't eliminate or can't overcome the loss of Hollier. But in the defensive secondary, Carolina does have some experience to rely on, and one guy in particular, Rondell Jones, is going to be playing with uh, kind of a handicap today. He broke a bone in his hand early in the ball game at West Point last week, yet you can see right there, still had 12 tackles. He's going to stay in the lineup. Cookie Massey may not start today because he's had an eye infection, but he is part of that good, solid secondary. Those guys have played for a couple of years and grown together. They're very heady players back there. Mac Brown is very confident about what he has in the secondary. Now on the other side of the football, not only is Mac Brown confident, but Chucky Burnett's confident with the running backs that he's got behind him to help him move that offense. Well, last year at this point when Carolina played NC State, they really did not have a running game out of the tailback spot. Randy Jordan is back and running well. Natron Means was runner-up for ACC Rookie of the Year last year. He's coming off an ankle injury and is pretty close to 100%. I don't think he's all the way back yet. But without question, when you have Means and Jordan able to run the ball effectively, it takes so much pressure off of Chucky Burnett. He is not forced to try and do more than he is capable of doing. You know that Mac Brown wants to have tailbacks go because that's the way it is at Carolina. Yeah, it certainly has been a tradition there. And Mike Hogwood has got some special guests along with him when ACC football today continues from Raleigh right after this. Our heels look to end a three-game losing streak to the Wolfpack when they visit NC State and the Exxon ACC Game of the Week next. Kickoff of that game is just a couple of minutes away, and as we told you, today is a big celebration of 100 years of Wolfpack football. That celebration began last night, and it began in a very big way. It was quite a celebration last night at the Raleigh Civic Center. Over 700 former players and alumni turned out to celebrate 100 years of Wolfpack football. A lot of memories relived last night. A lot of great players were in attendance, like Ted Brown and Roman Gabriel, all Americans who have had their 
jerseys retired. They were signing some autographs. Class of 1941 was there relivering some memories. They said it was just like a old class reunion. And somehow those short runs turned into long ones. And those losses uh, maybe didn't seem so bad last night. Bill Yost, Stan Fritz, Don Bucky, some of the former Wolf Packers there. MC for the event was Jerry Punch. He introduced Dick Sheridan. And the current North Carolina State coach presented a former coach, Earl Edwards, with a big award. A lot of awards were handed out last night. Gene Corrigan, the commissioner of the ACC, was there. That's Mike Quick, former receiver. There was also a videotape presentation celebrating 100 years of North Carolina State football. I'm joined now by a couple of guys you might recognize who know what this game is all about. Ted Brown, the great running back from the 70s, and a guy who hit Ted Brown a couple of times, Buddy Curry, super linebacker for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Both guys went on to have great careers in the pros. Ted, what are your thoughts about NC State in North Carolina? Well, it's the start of a very, very big game. You know, it's one of the biggest games of the year, and it doesn't make a difference how well you do during the year. You have to beat North Carolina. If you beat North Carolina Tar Heels, you've had a successful season. That's what this game is all about. It's about competition. It's about playing your heart out. It's about beating Carolina. Well, Buddy Curry, when you were uh, playing against North Carolina State, I guess you were keying on red number 23, huh, Ted Brown? He was pretty tough to bring down, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. As uh, a matter of fact, uh, even in pros, when we played Minnesota Vikings, I was keying on Ted Brown. So uh, there was a lot of years that we keyed on him. How big was the state game for the Carolina Tar Heels? Well, it, it, at the time I played, that was the biggest game of the year also. And uh, we started getting ready right after the, the game previous to that. And just the intensity level um, and, and the nervousness of the players going out on the field just made the, uh, this game the biggest. You had a great interception in one of those games. I believe it was 1977. Is that one of your big memories of college football? Yes, it is. That's that's one of the biggest memories because it was right down here on this field. And I think it was like 37 yards I intercepted and ran it in and uh, really helped our team win. And that was the only time that we won while Ted was here. Well, Ted Brown had a game where he gained 200 yards against North Carolina. Do you remember that day? And uh, how do you feel about that now as you look back on it? And I think it was probably one of the, the greatest performances at the opposing team field. You know, I think we was over at Chapel Hill when it happened. And uh, it felt really good. It felt really good to win. But, uh, I mean, it was just all a great game. And I, I had the line blocking for me really well. And, and it all came together that particular day. And I think we came with a game plan, ready to play. And uh, Coach Ryan got us ready to play, and we did the job. Quick question for both of you guys. What are the players thinking right now as you're just a few minutes away from kickoff? Well, I'm sure they got butterflies in their stomachs and uh, and they're really nervous and they're anxious. They're ready to get that first hit. And once they get that, and they'll, they'll be ready to go. How about it, buddy? Well, it's, that's exactly right. You're anxious to get that first hit out of the way. It, that kind of clears your, your the cobwebs from your head. You know, and then you can try straight on your signs. All right, guys, thanks a lot for being with us. Two of the all-time greats, Buddy Curry and Ted Brown here on ACC Football Today. We'll be back with a preview of that big game down in Death Valley, Clemson and Georgia Tech in just a minute. Back at Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, fans and players are ready for today's big matchup between the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack. That's not the only ACC game, though. Let's take a look around the league at the other teams who are playing today. Florida State, number one in the nation, and Michigan, that's a big game. Duke tries to stay unbeaten against Virginia. Wake Forest tries to get back on a winning track. And how about that game down in Death Valley? Georgia Tech at Clemson. For a report on that matchup, let's go down to Tigerland and Bob Jubeck. When the Tigers hit the hill at Clemson, they'll be determined to end Georgia Tech's hex. For the Jackets are A, the most recent team to beat Clemson, that being last year, and B, the most recent team to beat Clemson at Death Valley, a 30-14 win in 1989. So the Tigers want revenge. It's been hard on me, you know. I've just been waiting, you know, since we lost last year. You know, I gave everything I had on the field. And I've just been waiting at another crack at Georgia Tech. And, um, you know, it's here, and I'm very excited about the ball game, and I'm just anxious to get it underway. Clemson comes in 2-0, but those wins came against vastly inferior opposition. So personal feelings put aside, the Clemson Tech winner not only advances in the ACC standings, but as the Tigers are quite aware, in the national polls, too. Certainly we've got some teams that have played well in our conference, and I think that... Uh, 
for us to defeat those teams certainly would help our, our national rankings. So regional and national prestige is on the line today at Death Valley where Clemson hosts Georgia Tech. At Clemson, this is Bob Juback for ACC Football Today. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. Next Saturday, we'll be right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, once again for ACC Football Today. We'll see these Wolfpack again, and we'll get our first look of the season at the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. That should be a great net matchup, and that is one week from today. Well, that's our show for today. Kickoff between North Carolina and North Carolina State is just moments away. We'll be back with that, so stay right where you are. I'm Mike Hogwood. We'll see you in one week again for ACC Football Today. So long, everybody. ACC Football Today has been brought to you by Delta, the airline of ACC country. We love to fly, and it shows. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call Jefferson Pilot. following is an exclusive presentation of J.P. Sports. The coaches and players in today's North Carolina, North Carolina State game will probably tell you that today's game is not crucial, but these fans won't buy it for a moment. What happens here today at Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina is going to be talked about in offices, barbershops, and over kitchen tables all over the old North State. Of course, both teams will survive this game, and one of them may even go on to become a dark horse for the ACC title. But to these fans, there's only one thing that matters today. Should be a good game today. Yeah, but I'll never forget that game last year. Second left. Oh, it comes man. Comes down to Hartman's foot. Can he hit a long one? Hang on to your hat. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. And it's gone! <laughs> Wolfpack wins! Hey, that was some game. How about that Wolfpack defense, huh? All right, all right, all right, okay? I'll tell you, that uh, Burnett kid from Burlington, he's having a good year. Yeah, well, we'll see what he does today, all right? Yeah, should be a good game. We'll see. We'll see. JP Sports presents the best in regional college football, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon Phase 4 Gasolines. For high performance and cleaner engines, rely on new Phase 4 Gasolines from Exxon. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call Jefferson Pilot. By Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. By Delta, the airline of ACC country. We love to fly and it shows by Diet Pepsi and caffeine-free Diet Pepsi. You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. Welcome to Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, site of today's ACC Exxon Game of the Week from JP Sports, North Carolina and North Carolina State. Jam to the rafters when they get done counting heads. There'll be some 53,000 on hand for this one. Good afternoon. I'm Steve Martin, along with Jack Corrigan in North Carolina, North Carolina State. It always conjures up some great feelings, especially on the North Carolina side this year, because for the first time in several years, Jack, they feel that they are coming in even with the NC State program. They've made a lot of progress in terms of the depth of the Carolina program the last couple of years. Maybe best exemplified by junior quarterback Chucky Burnett. He came in for the first time at a, as a Carolina quarterback in this game a couple of years ago. They did not have much of a running game. They had all rookie receivers. They had a tight end who was a former quarterback. Burnett had a horrible day, but now he is number one in the conference in passing efficiency. 
They have a running game behind him, and Mac Brown doesn't have to ask him to do more than he has done in the past. And because of that, Carolina's offense is a lot more productive. And, of course, his opposite number, Terry Jordan, it's been a crisis of confidence for him, too, and he's got his confidence at a very good level. Well, a different path to the starting job. Terry, of course, replacing Charles Davenport as his starting quarterback last year. He has gotten better and better as it has gone along. He has got lots of weapons around him. They've got all those running backs. They've got all those receivers, and Terry does his job. Well, you know, a lot of young men make the decision early in their high school careers as to what school they're going to go to and the players that are involved in this game are no different. Anthony Barber has a unique story on how he decided to go to NC State. When I was younger I really wasn't that big of a football fan as I was a basketball fan and I'd sit at home one night and I watch um, State lose to Carolina in basketball. Um, State had the game. One thing was something like maybe 10 seconds left. Um, Clyde Austin was dribbling around and someone stole the ball from, from Carolina and dunked it in and won the game for them. I, from that point on, I just, I just wanted to go to state. I just disliked Carolina from that point on. The testing lasted two years and yielded new gasolines that are... Tar Heels of North Carolina getting set to come onto the field as we get set for the 81st renewal of this rivalry. Right now, let's head to the sidelines for a little bit of the flavor of this ball game to Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, we've already seen the first tactical maneuver of the game. Mac Brown wouldn't run his guys on the field till after State got out here. And you can hear already, probably, this is a pretty partisan State crowd. The guys here on this team, they may say that it's not that big a game, but right now you can bet that the butterflies are really flowing. The crowd is already into this game in a big, big way, and because of that, I think these players are really pumped up. One thing you may want to look for are some nervous mistakes early in this game because these guys are going to take a couple of hits before they really get the butterflies out in a game this big. One of the guys are really pumped up and says this is a big game is wide receiver, a senior for NC State. Here's Charles Davenport. If you've been in North Carolina, and you, you know the rivalry. You can feel it. I mean, they, they don't care about any game but that one. You can go one in uh, ten as long as you beat Carolina. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer. The first... The feelings are high. As the NC State helmets are held high along their sideline. Their crowd dominates the scene here in Raleigh. This is the 81st renewal. North Carolina on top since 56, and actually since 53, when the ACC moved out of the Southern Conference, that series has evened up quite a bit. You see the home team hasn't had the best of luck the last times out, and North Carolina, when they win here, their record is quite impressive. There's Clint Waltney to kick off, and he'll be kicking deep to Anthony Barber and Eddie Gorn. Green there's Goins, and we're just about set. Mac Brown, head coach of the Tar Heels. Walkley gets it away, and Goins will swoop under this at the two. Comes into his own blocker and gets out to the 23-yard line. And the tackle made by Jimmy Hitchcock. Let's take a look at our two values starting lineup. Terry Jordan, we talked about a few moments ago. Anthony Barber and Greg Maynard will get the starting calls at the running back spots, but we will see as many as six different players, maybe even as many as seven out of those two spots. This offensive line, well, Dick Sheridan thinks it might be the best one he's ever had here at NC State. Adel Harrison and G on the right side have been a dominant group thus far. For the defensive unit, of North Carolina as they attend to the injured player down on the field. It's going to be Damian Covington. Damian Covington is the guy who was down. We'll try and take a look at the defensive unit of North Carolina. Well, we're going to see. We can watch Covington right there in the middle leading the convoy. Boom. Yet he took the worst of a blow from one of the men coming down, Bernardo Harris, a linebacker for Carolina, the wedge blocker, the wedge breaker, did it right there. First and 10 for NC State. They're at their own 22-yard line. By the way, North Carolina won the opening coin toss and deferred their option to the second half. The conditions here are just about perfect. The wind is out of the northeast, and it's blowing over the top of the stadium today. Terry Jordan bringing them out. He's got Maynard as his lone setback. Two wide receivers out, Shantee and Davenport. 
The throw on first down, complete to Davenport at the 30. Brought down at the 33-yard line by Thomas Smith. That's a completion of 11 yards. Defensively, a good up-front group headed by Barker and Bolden. Brown getting early action this afternoon. They missed White Hollier, but Gash, Thigpen, Steinbacher, and Perry, probably the best group out of that defensive unit, and a strong secondary as well. Rondell Jones playing with the broken hand as a soft cast on that left hand. First and 10 for NC State. They're at their own 34-yard line. That's Barber in motion. Here's Maynard, the fullback, and he's nailed at the line of scrimmage. Coming in to get him quickly was Austin Robbins to make the initial stop as he slipped over the 35-yard line. Well, you will see North Carolina State more often than not. I'd say almost three out of four times when they run the ball, they want to run it towards their tight end, Todd Harrison. North Carolina is aware of that as well, and it's that battle of not only strategy, but physical ability to see who's going to win that fight more often than not. See how NC State disguises that tendency this afternoon. Jordan on second and nine. Back to throw, pass is incomplete, intended for Williams. Nice coverage by Thomas Smith. Down on the high, uh, sidelines, let's find Mike Hogwood. Guys, the story on Damon Covington, the freshman linebacker, he just got his bell rung real good, but right now it's clearing up a little, and he does know what day it is and who North Carolina State's playing, and that's a pretty good sign, says the trainer. I wonder if bell ringing is in the doctor's uh, <laughs> vocabulary. There are a few <laughs> other descriptions as well you can use. We're treating him for bell ringing. Third down and nine yards to go. No score. State's first possession. The pass complete to Liddell George, the fullback, and he is nailed by Tommy Thigpen as soon as he got the ball for a loss of two. It was a good play call by the NC State offense, but Tommy, Tommy Thigpen, watch the right side of your screen. Thigpen sees the screen action and slices right through the attempted block of Mike G. Had Thigpen not made that play, there was room to run. So it brings on the punting unit. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. They're going to give uh, Kilpatrick lots of people to look at. That's Kilpatrick in pump formation. There's Eric Blunt. Set to become one of the record-setting UNC kick returners. Looking for room. Cuts up the field and gets to the 33-yard line. It's a punt of 48 yards in return of 15. And North Carolina will set up as their offensive unit takes the field. Chucky Burnett, the junior out of Burlington, getting the starting call at quarterback this year. Means and Falkerson, good solid running backs. York more of the blocking type. Holiday, their big play threat. Randall Parsons at center, the best man on an experienced line. Bollinger and Oberg on the right side are also strong. We'll see Andy Dinkin as the day goes along today. North Carolina really nicked up in their game with Army a week ago. Chucky Burnett, first play of the game for him. And he's scrambling for his life and throws it incomplete. Really pressing on the play was John Akins. John Akins had a Super Bowl game a week ago against Wake Forest. Carolina trying a little play action early on. He wanted to go deep to Corey Holiday, but the pressure from Akins right from the get-go forces Burnett to throw it away. Second down and 10 coming up for Burnett at his own 31-yard line. Falkerson and Means are the setbacks. Here's Natron Means. First time around, set down by Billy Ray Haynes and John Akins as he gets out over the 34-yard line. Mark Thomas, Ricky Logo, and John Akins have been probably better than expectations. Even the Carolina coaches commented on that. Haynes leads an outstanding linebacking group. We've talked about that secondary. They have already picked off 10 passes in just three ball games. Turnover ratio 17 to 4, plus 14, plus 13 right now at that position. Third down coming up for him for North Carolina. It's about seven yards to go. Pass is complete. Over the middle of the tight end, Deems May. And that's going to be a critical play for North Carolina to execute this afternoon. But I tell you what, they didn't get the spot that they thought they were going to get, and he's going to be just shy. Right there, a little circle route between the linebackers and Deems May making his sixth catch already this year. Thought when he fell forward he had the first down, but where his backside hit was on the 41-yard line, and that was shy of first down yardage. Scott McAllister never hit a punt under 40 yards last year. He's one of the nation's leaders in this department. Punting to Liddell George. Into the sun. 
Great kick. Backs him back to the nine. George works away. And he won't get away from this tackler at the 14-yard line. It's a 49-yard kick and a six-yard return. And North Carolina will set up their second possession when we come back. No score in Raleigh. Steve Martin, along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. And there's our score on our on ACC Game of the Week so far. No score early on with about four minutes gone. And North Carolina State looking at first and ten from their own 14-yard line. Second possession of the game. The punt officially marked off by Scott McAllister at 51 yards. Anthony Barber. Barber threads his way to the 21-yard line. Slips a few tackles. Makes a nice gain of five yards on the play before Bracey Walker caught up with it. North Carolina trying to make a lot of last second moves on their defensive front. That time gambling or guessing that State was going to run to its left. Instead it ran to the right and they were a little outmanned on that side. Walker had to come up from the secondary to make the hit. Lawrence and Goins are the wide receivers and an ideal offensive coordinator's call. Second and five out of the eye. Movement ahead of time by J.R. Bolden, the middle guard, who got across early. We'll see what the officials say about this one. As you look at Jordan. Well, Jordan. Terry's telling us what the penalty was, and I think he's probably right. You have a dead ball foul, encroachment on the defense. So Charles Phillips squares it away, and that'll give North Carolina State, I believe, a first down. Going to be very close to it. That was just J.R. Bolden, the junior out of Chapel Hill, anticipating the snap count, trying to be there as quickly as he could, and a little too quick. So it changes to first and ten now for North Carolina State. The Wolfpack coming in here at three and zero with a conference victory under their belt over Wake Forest. North Carolina two and zero, both non-conference wins over Cincinnati and Army. And Jordan, who's completed 54 percent of his passes thus far this year, is under center. goes to Barber. Barber has yardage up over the 35-yard line. Knocked down there by Thigpen and Austin Robbins. And let's go to the sidelines once again for Mike Hawkwood. Guys, the North Carolina coaches feel the key for Chucky Burnett today is the big C word, confidence. Even though North Carolina didn't get a first down, Chucky did complete a pass and he threw it into a crowd. He was also pressured on one play and he showed a lot of poise in the pocket. They offered him a lot of congratulations when he came off and said, hey, Chucky, good start. Don't worry about it. It's that type of pass downfield vertically that Chucky has to execute for North Carolina to move the football this afternoon. North Carolina State will let him have the sidelines all day. Here's Barber on second down and five, looking for running room, and runs out of it back at the line of scrimmage. Bolden is there to clean up. Several other people helped out. Steinbacher, Cookie Massey also in on the play, and Jonathan Perry as well. Cookie Massey, the strong safety, had rolled up into the slot, and he causes some traffic problems, and you saw the movement by Tommy Thigpen as he scraped behind the defensive line, sat right in the hole, Anthony Barber saw that 4-0 in sky blue and said, let me try another route. That one wasn't any better either. Loss of about a yard brings up third, and if it's not a long five, it's six. Here's Gavin Paul, or rather that is a pass complete out in the flats to Santee. Complete at the 46-yard line. Brought down by Rondell Jones. It's a gain of 17 yards as Terry Jordan searches down the middle. You see... Chad Santee, the senior who has been out of the program for two years, watched Jordan stay in against the pressure of Jonathan Perry. Little crossing route beyond the linebackers, and it's all timing. And Terry Jordan had just enough time before he was wearing Jonathan Perry. Chad Santee with four receptions, two of them for touchdowns. First and ten. North Carolina State at their own 47. Pass this time complete to Davenport. Davenport in North Carolina territory at the 47-yard line. Thomas Smith is on the tackle after the gain of six. If you talk to any defensive coach in the Atlantic Coast Conference, they tell you number seven worries them with the football as much as any receiver in the conference. Not so much how he runs routes or how he catches the ball, but what he does with it after he catches it. First time he touched the ball as a wide receiver, it was a 60-yard touchdown against Clemson. Second down and about three. And off goes to Maynard, the fullback. He rambles to the 41-yard line, carries Thigpen along with him, and also Rondell Jones on the stop. 
And it's another first down for North Carolina State. Six yard gain on the play by Maynard. You want to talk about emotion and the way this game is. Watch what happens to Terry Jordan here on the option. Boom. Eric Gash says that's as far as you were going to go. Fortunately for the state fans, Jordan had already handed the ball off to Maynard. First and ten. At the North Carolina 40-yard line. NC State trying to get one of their patented drives going. Barber falls as he gets to the line of scrimmage. And that'll stop that play right there. Austin Roberts is covering on the play. Roy Barker as well. Anthony shaking his head. State right here wants to do much of what they did last week against Wake Forest. Just grind away not only the clock, but the physical toll on the defense. So that even if you're not scoring as many points in the first half, you will in the second half. Second down and 11. Jordan's changing up. Gary Downs is into the ball game. He gets the pass and complete. Covering on the play, Thomas Smith. Well, there's a situation where NC State got caught with a play that was fine in terms of its strategy, but ill time in terms of who was in the ball game. They had Gary Downs in a tailback, and really Chris Williams or Aubrey Shaw do a better job of catching the ball out of the backfield than do Downs or Barber. And you see Liddell George is coming to the ball game now, as well as Shaw. George, an excellent receiver. Third down and 11. No scores. Jordan looking for his fifth completion, and it is complete to Davenport at the 27-yard line. Great catch by Davenport, 15 yards downfield. Sean Crocker covers. It looks very simple when you diagram it on a blackboard, but this is a tough throw for a quarterback, and that's just great extension by Charles Davenport to come up with the first down. Why is that such a hard play? The quarterback has to throw it nearly 40 yards to get the 12 or 15 yards to get the first down. Big third to first conversion for North Carolina State. They sit at the 27-yard line of North Carolina. Santee and Goins, the wide receivers. Jordan trips over Barber as he was sprinting out on the option play to the left side. Mike Hogwood talked early about emotional mistakes. That's an emotional mistake right here. Anthony Barber and Jordan, they're both so anxious to do something. One of them didn't know what the play was. Barber was expecting a, a play fake or get it, get the ball off tackle. Jordan's already attacking the perimeter. Neither one saw the other one come. Harry Jordan, though, by and large, is not that emotional a guy, but you gotta wonder what runs through his mind on a day like today. Second they come. Flips on and get the pass incomplete to Davenport. He trapped it with Thomas Smith covering at the 17-yard line. Ran a safety blitz with Cookie Massey as well as Eric Gash coming on the play. The one thing that State does not want to get into, and on the last two sequences, they've goofed up on first down and put themselves in a third and long. On the other side, Carl Tor Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Carolina, said he was worried about State's ability to convert on third down. That's State's M.O. They like to own the clock for six or seven minutes. We've got a whistle and a timeout for North Carolina. So with 6-12 left to go in the first quarter and no score, we pause now for a word from your local station. We're back at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. No score. North Carolina State facing a key third down, third and 12. This drive started at the 15th. It's in his 12th play. Harry Jordan back to throw. Looking right down the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Aubrey Shaw over the middle. And that's going to bring out the field goal kicking unit, Damon Hartman. Matt Brown sized a sigh of relief for his defense. Mack decided to go with just a four-man rush and drop seven into coverage. They tried to split the zone with Aubrey Shaw. And you see Bracey Walker, the strong safety, actually had as good a shot at it as Shaw did. Jordan probably put a little too much air under that attempt. Damon Hartman will attempt a 46-yarder, which would be his longest this season. His longest, however, career-wise, with a 56-yarder that you probably know about if you're a Carolina or NC State fan. His attempt is good, and NC State cashes in on a long drive to take the lead. 
Three to nothing over North Carolina with six minutes left to go in the first period of play. A low line drive kick as you look at part of the crowd of 53,922, 14th biggest in Carter Finley history. And here we are with nine minutes gone in the first quarter. Carolina has had the ball for just three plays, and now they are down on the scoreboard. It was not the scenario that Mac Brown wanted to start this ball game with. You see what Damon Hartman has meant to the Wolfpack and their fans in the games against North Carolina. The most memorable one, of course, a year ago. We will look at this Wolfpack team again next week here at Carter Finley in a great game against Sean Jones and Coleman Rudolph and Marco Coleman and the rest of Georgia Tech next Saturday. Well, the field goals uh, have been less than successful with the movement of the goalposts into a narrower distance. There you see what has happened so far this season of 40 plus yards, two out of seven in the ACC. 50 yard field goals are down, and of course, point after touchdowns are also down by four. Four misses so far. David Hartman's only miss this season was last week against Wake Forest. Mark Fable will kick. Here is Blunt at the 22. Blunt is attacked at the 27-yard line. Brought down by a host of defenders. Most prominently in there also was Keith Battle, who's done an outstanding job in special team coverage. There's Blunt. And Chucky Burnett taking the field. Battle has seven special team tackles as far this season. First and 10, North Carolina. They ran play action on first down last series. Let's see what they do here. E.J. Runyon is back there at fullback. Natron means behind him. Naked bootleg. Here comes Burnett. Complete to Blunt. And Blunt gets out to the 40-yard line. Gain of about 11. Mark Thomas has to come over and make the tackle. Outstanding play fake by Chucky Burnett. His problem was he almost gets Eric Blunt convinced that he's going to run the ball. Blunt had almost turned his head away from Burnett. But fortunately for Carolina, he turned back and then took the short pass and added another half dozen yards to it. 11 to be exact for Blunt. They like what he can do after he catches the football. First and 10 for Carolina. Movement all along the offensive wall for the Tar Heels. Andy Dinkin and Ricky Shaw, the left guard and tackle, respectively, for Carolina. I think it was a sweep left. What do you think? <laughs> ball. False start on the offense. They weren't pass blocking, that's for sure. But they were hinging around the corner in a hurry. Mac Brown in his fourth season here at North Carolina. Looking on, he's seen his team go one and ten twice and then six, four, and one a year ago. There's Chucky Burnett. His first time on this stadium turf. He was three for 15 and three interceptions. Hits now to Randy Jordan into the game as he turns the corner. Sebastian Savage drives him out of bounds at the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about five on the play. Jordan brings an element to the Carolina attack that they sorely missed last year when he got hurt in the preseason. You see Sebastian Savage there who made the stop. Jordan was a state champion in high school in the 100, the 200. He's run a 10-400 meters in his uh, high school track career. He has that ability to just outrun the coverage of the secondary trying to stop the sweep. Jordan gives you the speed, means gives you the power. Second down and five for North Carolina. Here's Burnett. Same play as the first down play. This time it doesn't work as Blunt can't get to the ball thrown behind him. It didn't work as well because Mark Thomas, the defensive lineman with outside contain that time, stayed home a little bit more. Burnett was not able to challenge the line of scrimmage on his rollout. Had to get rid of the ball more quickly and didn't deliver the strike he wanted to to Blunt. And Tyler Lawrence, of course, covering on the play. He'll have himself a day trying to chase Eric Blunt around this play. Huge crowd, third and ten now for North Carolina. On their own 40. Burnett going upstairs. And it is incomplete pass intended for Corey Holiday down the far sideline. Covering on the play, Dwayne Washington and the appreciative NC State crowd watches North Carolina move its punting unit onto the field. Well, that offsides or that false start penalty on first down really hurt North Carolina on that sequence. 
The NC State defense yet to give up a touchdown this year. They've only given up one field goal over the first three. Here's McAllister. Big rush is on. Flag on the play. George will get away from the kick or at least try to. Now the question is, referee Charles Phillips, will he call this the five yard running into the kicker or the 15 yard roughing the kicker? That will determine whether or not Carolina will have to do it again. It's the five yard penalty if I read Charles uh, signals properly. And it's Ray Frost who got blocked into him and Janamore was there as well. Greg Janamore. McAllister got off a 44 yard punt jack and took a North Carolina bounce. And I think Carolina's going to decline it. We have run into the kicker five yards. The penalty has declined. It'll be first down. They'll take the 44 yarder in the position of the football at the 16 yard line of NC State. Similar territory from where State drove a while ago. NC State leading Carolina by three. Declining real estate. Rex on ACC Game of the Week. JP Sports bringing it to you. North Carolina State leading North Carolina three to nothing. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, and Mike Hogwood on scene for you. There's Mac Brown. His defense is held so far. We asked to do so again against Terry Jordan. Dick Sheridan looking on. Jordan completed five out of nine passes, three of them to Charles Davenport. First round play goes to Greg Maynard right up in the middle of the line. It's going to be up there for about two yards out to the 18-yard line. Florida State and Michigan playing in the big battle, and boy, Bobby Bowden Seminoles. Fake field goal. You had to expect something. Bobby Bowden has more trick plays than any coach in college football. Gary Mora was saying they execute them and teach them well. They're expected. It's not something they throw into the last minute. Second and seven for NC State. And off goes to Gary Down. Gary tries to follow Mike G over the 20 yard line, gets up to the 22. Tackle on the play by Kurt Brown. Also, Tommy Thigpen is around the ball, which you would imagine. Okay, so now we get into that third and medium situation, third and four. Carl Torbush said two things his defense has to do stop the third down consistency of state and try and force turnovers. They've not done that as much as they want to with the Carolina defense. Riddell George is in the backfield. You would anticipate pass. George falls down on this pattern, and that causes Jordan to go down right afterward. Troy Barnett on the sack. He was looking at Liddell George all the way. He was looking at George to his right. He's got Williams curling out of the backfield to his left. But you see right there, he had locked in, and sometimes that's where a young quarterback gets caught. He was zoned in on Liddell George, and when he didn't have anybody else, there was no place to go. Loss of five on the play brings Kilpatrick onto the field to punt it away on fourth and nine. One is back deep. North Carolina setting up a return. Good kick. Run at the 36. Flag on the play upfield. Ball out to the 43-yard line. It's a 47-yard punt and an 8-yard return. The tackle made on the play by ne Neil Auer. Well, let's see what the flag is all about back at the North Carolina State 43-yard line. It may go against... North Carolina State, they're going to call from what Todd Harrison indicated, they're going to call holding against NC State, which would be defensive holding because the ball was in the air and actually the possession had already been exchanged when the flag came down. Charles Phillips looking for further consultation. We have holding on the kicking team. So there's the call. And now North Carolina will discuss the opportunity and the options that are presented to them here. They have the ball right now at about the 40-yard line, or close to it. You see Mac Brown's indication. He wants them to kick it again, so I'm, get, I'm guessing the officials are saying that the holding infraction took place before the exchange of possession. That's what Dick Sheridan wants to find out. We have holding on the defense during the kick. 
penalty will be half the distance to the goal line and will kick again. All right. So Mac Brown looking for even better field position for his offense, and Kilpatrick will have to come on one more time. Stay tuned at the conclusion of today's game. We'll be selecting a Schick most valuable player from each of our teams involved today. And there's Kilpatrick. Marches out there with a 40-yard average. His longest group this year has been 52 yards. And he'll be called upon to do it this time from the end zone. Blunt standing at his own 45-yard line. Carolina last time set up a return. They have 10 men up. I still think they have the return now. Patrick gets it away to the 46-yard line. Blunt. Every yard of bonus here for North Carolina. They're at the NC State 46-yard line. It's a 45-yard kick by Kilpatrick, a seven-yard return by Eric Blunt. Shad Santee comes up on the special team's work to make the tackle. 3-0, NC State on top, but Carolina on the... Wolfpack side of the 50 yard line for the first time. Good call by Mac Brown. They ended up getting about 10 yards out of that exchange because of the penalty against NC State. 54,000 fans looking on. Chucky Burnett operating out of his best field position of the day. Here's Means. Gets his way to the North Carolina State 39 yard line. Tyler Lawrence had to wrestle him down there along with Mark Thomas. A gain of seven. Little inside trap play behind the block of left guard Andy Dinkin. And make that James Demetrakis who made the block who was in at left guard. Good little just inside trap and most effective. Nice first down gain of seven. Second and three for Carolina. Means hit hard. Really drilled by David Merritt. Merritt made the first stop. Aikens cleaned it up. But Means paid for that one. No gain on the floor. Watch the acceleration to the ball by David Merritt. Boom! Ricky Logo was also there as well. Merritt coming underneath the play. Just exploded into Means. Third down three for Carolina. They trail 3-0. They're at the NC State 39. Burnett on the option. He's short. He'll be short by about a yard. More than that by the spot. He's going to be short by about a yard and a half. Logo and Thomas in there on the tackle for North Carolina State, and the punting unit is on. Scott McAllister is on the field as the NC State defense, first in defense against scoring, third versus the pass, fourth in total D, and these are national rankings, and they have done the job there. Lavelle George, please. The fake. I don't know. It's going to be close. It is going to be very close as they snapped it to the up back. Gracie Walker. It was the second hit by, I believe, Sebastian Savage. And let's see if we can. They snap it to the up man, Gracie Walker. Tyler Lawrence fights the blockers off, and Savage right there with help from Merritt and Billy Ray Haynes with the stop. The question is how close he is, and he is very close, and Billy Ray is injured again. He has got that bad ankle. That would be another serious blow to NC State if Haynes cannot come back. This is going to be very, very close. So Mac Brown forsakes defensive field position to try to keep a drive moving. Let's see how the gamble paid off. They held. North Carolina State will take the football over back at their own 36-yard line. Well, I saw NC State play Kent State a couple of weeks ago. We, of course, broadcast last week's game with Wake Forest. I don't think I've seen a secondary that hits harder than the NC State defensive backs do. NC State's characteristic. They fly to the football and everybody does it. Jordan now. First and ten as Downs is his tailback. To the flats complete. That's Hinton. Who caught a touchdown pass a week ago. Goes down on the grass with Sean Crocker. 
Out to the 47-yard line. Gain of 11. There you see some of the numbers that Steve Martin was talking about where NC State ranks defensively in the country this year, and they've done little in this first quarter to diminish that reputation at all. Right now their offense on the field, first and ten, two yards shy of midfield. They ride the fullback, Lehner, over the 50-yard line to the 48. Gain of about four on the play. J.R. Bolden, the big middle guard, and they're on the tackle. Go back to the previous play in which they picked up the first down. That might have been the last play of the first quarter. But I like the idea of Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator, and Dick Sheridan. I like it when coaches, after a big play, go after a lot of yardage on the very next play. It, it paid off for them. They're back on the Carolina side of the 50. North Carolina State leading as we complete one period of play. 3-0 over North Carolina. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, and Mike Hogwood on site for you. Damon Hartman's 46-yard field goal, the only thing on the scoreboard here as we take the turn into the second quarter. NC State leading 3-0. Carolina will blitz on first down. Down. Up over the 48-yard line. That's a second down play and seven for North Carolina State. Let's go to the sidelines now, Mike Hogwood. Guys, bad news about Billy Ray Haynes. He re-injured the foot that he hurt last week against Wake Forest. The medical doctors have decided they're not going to chance anything. They're going to hold him out the rest of the game. So Billy Ray Haynes will not be back for NC State. Means Greg Janimore will see more action here in this ball game, and they'll rotate some other people in there as well. That's a big loss for Billy Ray Haynes. Averaging over 10 tackles a game for NC State. Deep drop for Jordan. Over the middle. Complete to Shad Santee in traffic. Rondell Jones and Thomas Smith make the stop after 19 yards. What a story for that young man out of Marietta, Georgia. It's a similar pattern that they ran earlier in the game. The deep crossing route. He was an honorable mention All-American out of Walton High School in Marietta, Georgia. Played early in his career here at State and then had some problems obeying the rules here with the Wolfpack. Terry Jordan is the guy who was down back at the 40-yard line. He got popped by Austin Robbins as he let that ball go. Backup is Jeff Bender. He's warming up quickly on the sidelines. But to finish my story on Santee, as you see Bender there, Santee was virtually kicked off the team for the past two years and they had pretty much written him out of the program but he wanted to play with NC State came back and he's been a big contributor this could be a tough moment for North Carolina State their quarterback who was just getting better and better after he struggled against Virginia Tech but came back with solid performances against Kent State and Wake Forest and now he is on his back on the football field and there's a considerable amount of concern over him right now. He got hit after delivering that pass to Santee. A well, he just passed over the middle on both parts. He really hung in there because he was getting pressure from Gash and Perry outside and then Robbins on the inside. See Austin Robbins number 98 looping around and he hits him in a sort of glancing blow, and it might have been how he landed that was as much a factor as anything else. They are calling for some extra help to get Jordan off the field. They're not going to move him right now at this point in time, so that looks like it's a serious injury here for Terry Jordan. We're going to take a break here with 14-7 left to go in the first half. There's Terry Jordan leaving the field. You see his left arm and wrist in a splint. And let's go down to the sidelines for an update on the situation from Mike Hogwood. Guys, they're putting Terry Jordan right in the ambulance, taking him to the hospital. It is a clear fracture of the left arm. His left arm is definitely broken. He's obviously out for this game. Now the question is, how long is he going to be out for NC State? Jeff Bender will get the duty now to take over the redshirt freshman at quarterback. That's the second player that NC State has lost today. There you see Bender. And there you see what he's done thus far this season. He led North Hills High School in the Pittsburgh area to the Mythical National Championship in 1987. That tells you a lot because they play great football in western Pennsylvania. The pass to Santee got on the first down. It happened so long ago, and now it's at the North Carolina 33-yard line. 
Big turn of events here for NC State. First play is the handoff to Maynard, the fullback. Thigpen comes in. Thigpen comes in along with Perry to make the stop. Tommy Thigpen playing in place of injured Dwight Hawley. Or actually, he would have been at the other linebacker spot. Here's what's happening elsewhere. Florida State increasing their lead over Michigan. That's a boring first quarter, huh? 29 points. <laughs> and Florida trying to bounce back from their loss at Syracuse. Right here, it's North Carolina State leading 3 to nothing, looking at second and seven on the North Carolina 30. Maynard, second time around. This time over the 30-yard line down to the 28. And it's evident here, Jack, that Ted Kane has got a very small plate here for Jeff Bender to get himself into the action. Well, some of the problem, even though you give your backup guy work when you get into big ball games like this, that starting quarterback's going to work maybe 60, 70 percent of the plays in practice during the week. So Jeff Bender just hasn't had a lot of time going through this week's game plan. Third down and four. NC State leading here three nothing. Bender's going to check off at the line. They're coming again. They send two. Bender completes the points for a touchdown. One redshirt freshman to another. They probably did that all the time in practice last year for the scout team. Look at the poise of the freshman with the blitz on. Stepped up and fires a BB. The defensive back on the play, Thomas Smith, had slipped and fallen down. Eddie Goins with the touchdown pass, his first touchdown reception of the season. Out of the hold of Tim Kilpatrick, Damon Hartman for the point after, splits the uprights. And North Carolina State gets a big boost following what could have been a devastating injury to their quarterback. 12.39 left in the first half, State by 10. Welcome back to Carter-Finley Stadium. It didn't take Jeff Bender long to get warm. A 27-yard touchdown strike in his third play from scrimmage to Eddie Goins puts North Carolina State on the board once again to lead 10 to nothing. There's the scoring drive. 63 yards, seven plays. Part of that ushered downfield by Terry Jordan until he fractured, or at least we think he fractured, his left arm, which will put him out for an indefinite period. Mark Faubel is in to kick it off for NC State. Another one of those NC State high and short kicks I think we'll see here. So we look for the up backs. Falkerson standing at the 25. Joey Yawk is a candidate. He proves this wrong and goes deep and kicks it into the end zone and out again. Well, that time, North Carolina adjusted their kickoff team and brought a lot of people up. And I think maybe Fowler just reads the way they are aligned and kicks accordingly. Kicked it deep. It's a touchback. It'll bring it out to the 20. And that's where North Carolina will have to start this drive and Jack now down 10 they've got to look at opening up the playbook a little bit. well they've got to think about it. there's still a lot of time 12 39 in the first half and they are only down two scores but they cannot let this game get away at the very least here they've got to get some field position and give their defense a rest only been on the field for eight plays in North Carolina offense Nate Trone means runs into big John Aikens at the 22 yard line gain of two on the play Nice play by Aikens, who seems to get better and better with each week. He's a well, sophomore. One of the things that helps Aikens and Mark Thomas is the guy between them, number 90 right there, Ricky Logo, the huge nose man for NC State. If he does the job tying up the center and the Carolina guards, then Aikens and Thomas and the linebackers roam free. Second down and nine. Burnett to throw and roll to the left. Incomplete intended for Deans Bay at the 30-yard line. Up third and long, not the type of situations that you like to see as an offensive coordinator. And Mac Brown, well worried about that right now. Chucky Burnett felt the pressure there from Clayton Henry. He is just two for six for 17 yards so far. He had Deems Bay open and probably had enough time to throw a better ball. But you're down 10 nothing. You feel the presence of Henry and you throw a pass a little too tall. Yawk and Holiday are the wideouts. Burnett the throw. Third down, pass complete to Holiday. First down yardage to the 37-yard line. 
Washington and Turner are on the tackle. It's a 16 yard gain for North Carolina on clutch third down play. NC State stayed back in a very soft zone this time. Burnett had enough time, throws it behind Holiday, but Corey makes a fine catch and picks up a most important Carolina first down. Corey Holiday is eighth catch of the season. First and ten, North Carolina trailing by ten. Here's Natron Means, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Greg Jamamore was the man who delivered the first hit. I'm chuckling because I was watching Ricky Logo on the play, and on the snap of the ball, Logo, watch right there in the middle of your screen. You see the two Carolina guys? They both went down with them because Ricky had a hold of their jerseys and literally pulled Dinkin and Parsons down on top of them. It left the linebackers free to roam. 12 hard-fought yards for Natron Means in five carries, second and nine. Burnett scrambling, gets rid of it. Intended for Corey Holiday downfield. Ricky Turner is defending, incomplete. Mark Thomas puts the pressure on Chucky Burnett here. Throwing on the run, puts this ball with the nose up in the air. That means it's a floater, and Ricky Turner making contact with Holiday, but going for the ball. And in the official's interpretation, he has as much right to it as the, as the receiver does. Third and long. Carolina trailing North Carolina State by 10, looking at third and nine. Jordan in the backfield with Falkerson. Pass intended for Falkerson, but Mark Thomas backs it away. Great disguise that time on defensive coordinator Buddy Green's call for NC State. They showed seven men at the line of scrimmage like they were coming. Burnett checked off. They rolled back into a safe zone, and then Mark Thomas just makes a fine individual play. McAllister comes on for his third punt of the day. Liddell George is back there deep. Up to 22. down at the 27-yard line. Coming up to make the tackle was Ray Jacobs that time on the special teams. A 40-yard kick for Scott McAllister and a three-yard return for Liddell George. But again, the NC State offense is on the field. That means North Carolina's defense has to come back out into the spot that they played most of this first half. Don't forget, next week, State will be battling Georgia Tech here at Carter-Finley Stadium. We'll have that game for you at 12 noon as these in-state rivals will then go elsewhere next week and that should be a game. First and ten for the Wolfpack of their own 27 with Jeff Bender at the control. Here comes the reverse to Davenport. Blocked by Bender. Here's Davenport on the ring. Covered a lot of yardage, a lot of it laterally out to the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of four on the play. Well, right there, North Carolina had an idea that maybe they would get Davenport involved in some kind of activity. Charles did a good job of enabling Jeff Bender to make a block for him. Eric Gash thought he was clipped when Chad Santee came back to help out on the play, but they end up getting almost five on the play, second and six. Tackled on the play by Smith and also Jonathan Perry. Bender, Anthony Parker. Is close to the first down if they give him the spot at the 38 yard line. Went down in the arms of Tommy Thigpen. That push straight off. It's a little delayed handoff, draw action, if you will. Bodies on defenders that time. You could just see those front men of Carolina being engaged by every one of the offensive linemen of NC State. Look at the push they're all getting. And that enabled Barber to pick and choose his way to get out close to the first down and pick it up. Gain of six and a half, maybe seven. Get back to what I talked about earlier in the telecast, Steve. Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Carolina, said we have to start forcing turnovers. Carolina has forced only four turnovers so far in nearly two and a half games. They have to do a better job of that because they have to give their offense more opportunities against that fine state defense. And this is a state offense that has only turned the ball over four times in the first three games, all of those in the opener against Virginia Tech. Here's the pass to the flats to George. He's going to uncork one. He's got Davenport deep. Caught it at the 14-yard line. What a play. 
What a great call by Dick Sheridan and his coordinator Ted Kane. What a great call. Even then, Carolina still has decent coverage on the play as Liddell George fires it 48 yards downfield. Watch the effort here by Davenport. He just steps in front of Thomas Smith on the play and is. Well, I got to tell you, Jeff Bender is enjoying the opportunity to play, but he's saying, Liddell, you're throwing it better than I am. <laughs> First and 10 for North Carolina State at the 13 yard line. Cotton, a fullback, Chris Cotton, one of three. North Carolina State will show this afternoon. Gets down close to the 10. Gain of three, Jonathan Perry and Rick Steinbacher in for North Carolina on the tackle. Isn't it ironic, though, that Charles Davenport, who came here as a quarterback, wanted to be the guy to guide the Wolf back to great success. It wasn't working out. He requests a chance to move to wide receiver and now is creating big plays for this program more than he did when he was running the offense. Hot four pace plays so far today. Second down and seven. Bender hands off to Barber. Barber's in trouble. And does very well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Thigpen is there to make the tackle. Cookie Massey is there as well. And also Cliff Baskerville. Well, sometimes you have to say to yourself, this is as wide as I can go, and it's time to get north and south. Anthony waited two or three times before he finally got vertical. Made a great effort to, to get some positive things out of it, but sometimes you got to make that choice a little sooner. North Carolina State with 10 first downs. They need one here on third and five, up 10 nothing. Inside the Carolina 10. Bender in the end zone. Incomplete. He was going for Chris Williams. Well, the Carolina defense with good coverage that time on third down. They really had to force NC State to kick the field goal. If they would have gone down 17 to nothing, it really would have put them in a bind in terms of their offensive play calling. At 13 nothing, if Hartman converts, you're still only down two touchdowns. He's got a 27-yard kick to make this time. His first one was 46 yards. So far on the year, Hartman is four out of five. Kilpatrick to hold. Nope. Just wide to the left. Wide to the right, actually. Left it a little short. Had that have been a 23 foot goal post, he would have made it. So North Carolina holds after the spectacular play to Davenport, but it goes to not North Carolina State leading by 10. As the Dead's pilot. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina. Steve Martin, Jack Horgan, and also Mike Hogwood. With all the action, North Carolina State leading North Carolina with 8.06 remaining in the first half, 10-0. The Carolina defense has just held their offense on the field. Now first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Burnett to the flats to Mike Falkerson. And North Carolina State is in heavy pursuit. Deep battle from the outside linebacking spot. Reading screen and just stepping up before the blockers could form in front of Falkerson. See battle moving. He just got there ahead of Andrew Ober. Battle playing in place of China Long as they get the rotation in. Billy Ray Haynes out at linebacker. Here is Burnett. Pass is complete to Randall Felton at the 23 yard line. Short gain on the play of about three. And that'll bring up third down and six as Burnett looks over his offensive unit. This is the fifth possession for North Carolina. They have two first downs so far. They have to start converting on third down. And they're looking at their third straight, third and long situation. Runyon, the fullback, with Means. The draw goes to Means. Breaks down inside. There's not much room outside. Merritt, Reed. Logo all in on the stop. No gain on the play. And the punting unit has to come back on the field. Watch the end of this play. And count the number of red jerseys and the number of white jerseys. Granted, it's a busted play. 
But Means gets outside. One, two, three, four, five, six men within a couple of yards of Natro Means. McAllister on the punt. Nice floater for Liddell George at the 31. And George is out to the 40-yard line before he's brought down there by Rick Steinbacker. 48 yards on the kick. Jacobs also in on the tackle. A nine-yard return by Liddell George. And on the sidelines, Mike Hogwood has a special guest. Hey, guys, a guy taking a week off from the NFL, or his team is, anyway. The Houston Oilers, one of their leading receivers, Haywood Jeffries, who starred here at NC State. What do you think of the Big Red so far? Oh, uh, they're looking great out there. Uh, that was a big play by Davenport, but they didn't score. They can just keep up the momentum. They're going to do a good job before this game is over. You're doing a great job for the Oilers. You guys are having a good year. Yeah, things are going well right now, but we had a little setback against those Patriots. Let's just hope that uh, next week when the Broncos come in that we can uh, get a victory. All right, Haywood, well, good to see you here on the sidelines today. Back up to Steve. Aubrey Shaw catches the pass from Jeff Bender, but there's a flag back in the NC State backfield at the 36-yard line. Thickman and Gash in on the tackle. It's a holding call against North Carolina State, so we'll call this reception back. And keep in mind, it goes from the spot of the foul now. Makes it end up being holding on the offense. Penalty will be from the spot of the foul, 10 yards. A little it's a ten more yard meaningful. Penalty. Yeah, it's a 10-yard penalty, but from the spot of the foul, it ends up being about a 13 or 14 yard infraction from the original line of scrimmage for the Wolfpack. So they'll have it first and, and almost 24 now. You don't want to be in those kinds of downs and distance situations with a redshirt freshman quarterback in there, even if you do have a 10 nothing lead. 6.07 left to go in the first half of play. There's the yardage, first and 23 for Jeff Bender. Playing in place of the injured Terry Jordan out with a fractured left arm. Left is on the pass intended for Harrison. Looked up a little bit late. It will bring up second down. Well, there was good pressure on the play that time from Roy Barker. Bender knew he had to get rid of the ball, and Harrison running a two or three count block at the line of scrimmage and then slipping out into the secondary hadn't got his head turned in time and Jeff said hey I to get rid of the ball the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by JP Sports this broadcast is a copyright presentation any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the ACC and JP Sports is prohibited second down and a long way to go 23 for Jeff Bender and off goes to George the fullback out over the 30-yard line. Nice diversion for NC State because when George is the game, you're automatically thinking pass. Well, they they talked about that, the offensive coaches for State saying that they have to at least show Liddell carrying the ball in their passing set just to keep the defenses honest. And sometimes you can pull off a big play on a carry like that. Third Here's Carolina's best chance to make something happen. Third and long. Third and about 20 to go, 19 or 20. North Carolina State leading here by 10. Bender. Pass complete to Shaw. Shaw hit twice. Steinbacker has him down. He does not have the first down up to the 41 yard line. Now there's a confidence that Dick Sheridan has in his defense. He said it's third and 20. All right if we can throw a little safe pass so we know we get the pass away. No sack. No interception. If we get a first down out of it great. If not we punt it away and the defense will have great field position. The defense has proved him to be very wise as far this season. They have not permitted a touchdown. And they've only permitted North Carolina two first downs in this game today. Fourth and ten for Kilpatrick. And there's Eric Blunt. Who hopes to give Chucky Burnett and the offensive unit a little better field position. Blunt at the 19. Good initial move to get himself over the 31 yard line. And that's where North Carolina will start first and 10 after Kilpatrick's 39 yard punt, a 14 yard return. Ooh, Florida State has moved out wider over Michigan right now. Well, three extra points they've missed in that one. Duke with the early advantage, so it won't be 59 to nothing like it was last year for the Blue Devils. And Florida maintains that advantage over the Bulldogs early on. Jackie Sherrill's been a story at Mississippi State. Right now the story here is 10-0 North Carolina State. North Carolina with a ball. Natron Means looking for running room. 
He hasn't found much of it today, but gets an opening play, and we have a flag down on the play late. I think we are going to see David Merritt guilty of a little over-exuberance at the end of the play. Let's wait for Charles Phillips' official indication. We have a dead ball, personal foul on the defense. First down, 15 yards. So two penalties may help North Carolina on both sides of the ball. The holding penalty and now the late hit. Watch the end of the play, the right side of your screen. Means goes down, and right there, a little extra by David Merritt. That's a good call by the officials. It's one thing to be exuberant. It's one thing to be active. It's one thing to be involved in the game. But an extra shot like that that has no purpose should be penalized. So it's going to be first and ten at midfield. Excellent field position for North Carolina. Here's Burnett. Means threads his way down to the 45-yard line. Nice five-yard gain. Tyler Lawrence from Greensboro, North Carolina, on the tackle. Means on the day, eight carries, 19 yards. Lots of time, just under 350 to play here in the first half. Carolina has two timeouts remaining. Means came into the game needing 57 to cross the 1,000 mark for his career. Means once again tries to get outside. Gets down to the 42-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down. Coming up to make the stop, Dwayne Washington. Mark Thomas made an initial hit, and Eric Counts also in on the stop for North Carolina State. When you have a 225-pound running back, you think of him as just being a power runner. But on that play, he did an excellent job of doing what coaches like to call the limp leg. As a guy went to make a hit on him, he relaxes a leg and it just sort of falls away from the tackler and he's got nothing to grab. Big third down play, third and two. Jordan has the first down. Oh, he's close to it. He may not have it. He is short. Reed came up to make the stop. Looked like he was going to dive ahead and get it. He's going to be at the 42. Jana Moore on the stop. They go to the speed back. Jordan, he tries to cut it up inside. Gianna Moore made first contact, and then it was Mike Reed flying up. Watch Gianna Moore scrape down the line of scrimmage, make first contact, and watch Reed come right there to make sure that Jordan didn't get it, but they're going to go for it on fourth and inches. Fourth and inches, Carolina trailing by 10. 2.38 to go, the fullback straight ahead. He needed the 40. Fulkerson was the man going for the first down, and it looks like they're going to give him the mark and give North Carolina the first down, but they'll probably measure before they... Well, they that's a first down. So the third first down, actually the fourth first down of the afternoon for North Carolina. Let's see if they run some play action now. Now they got a little momentum going. Let's see if they try and go deep. Burnett rolling, passes to the tight end, Deems Nay, and he is hit hard by Mike Reed at the 34-yard line. I got to tell you, I would not want to be a receiver in the area of number three. The sophomore, strong safety, just knows how to put licks on you. I mean, Deems May is 240 pounds, and he went flying. Granted, he didn't necessarily anticipate Reed being right there, but that's a big-time hit. Second down and three after the gain of seven. Clock moving a minute 45 left. First half. Here's Means. Gets outside. And gets over the 30-yard line down to the 27. He's got the first down. Nice block out there by Joey Yawk to tie up the defensive back. Well, it was an even better block on the line of scrimmage by Andrew Oberg, the right tackle. What's the right side of your screen is Oberg, number 78, will tie up. Clayton Henry, the linebacker. That enabled him to get around the corner. York did the job on Savage with his stock block, enough for Means to get outside and get the first down. Best sustained march for North Carolina this afternoon. First and 10, NC State sends everybody. Handoff goes to B.J. Runyon, the fullback. He gets down to the 24-yard line, a gain of three. Gianna Moore in on the stop for the Wolfpack. That is characteristic, though, of NC State. When you get a big first down deep in their scoring zone, they'll send everybody. You get, well, they'll send everybody on almost every play in the scoring zone right now. We've got North Carolina calling a timeout with the ball down inside 
the state 24 yard line it leaves Carolina with one timeout left there are 70 seconds a minute 10 to play here in the first half and Carolina really wants to be in a situation of scoring a touchdown if they score a touchdown here not only would it be the first touchdown scored against NC State this season it would really change the momentum complexion of this game we had a few moments ago NC State with their 10 to nothing lead looking like it might be 17 and then at least 13 Hartman misses the field goal and now Carolina with their best drive of the afternoon has a chance to really feel like they're leading going into the locker room even if they end up down on the scoreboard because if they get it to three points or seven points here and get the second half kickoff they're in great shape. And at halftime, we've got lots of things coming your way. Our scholar athlete, scholar athlete, one for the books, best of the ACC, and scores and highlights from our game and scores from around the country. So stay with us. Mike Hogwood has all the halftime action for you from Carter Finley Stadium. Steve Martin, Jack Horgan up top, Mike Hogwood on the sidelines. North Carolina looking at second and seven with a minute and ten left here in the first half. They trail by ten. Ten nothing. Chucky Burnett has Holiday split wide to the bottom, Yacht wide to the top. Means is his only setback. Pass to York, incomplete. Big hit delivered by Mike Reed. I mean to tell you, perfect anticipation. Little slant route to Joey York, and watch the state safety step up. I mean, this is right as the ball gets there. Yacht paid a price. Reed on the defensive plane. Another key third down for the Tar Heel. Blunt is in the slot with Yacht to the top side. Burnett looking that way. Big rush on. Intercepted by Sebastian Savage. That NC State defense best in the nation in denying points slamming the door again down near the goal line number four for Sebastian Savage had an inside blitz with both linebackers Ricky Logo comes three and Chucky Burnett throwing off balance anytime you see the nose of the football being the highest point of a pass that ball is going to be short and Savage stepped up and makes the turnover, the 11th interception, 18 turnovers forced this year by NC State. Bender has them at his own six-yard line. Maynard with the ball up over the five to the six, driven back. Not much gain there. 50 seconds remain. Roy Barker is in on the tackle. Now Carolina has one timeout left, but with three downs to play, they really cannot figure on getting the ball back from NC State we might see only one more play here although I got to tell you with a redshirt freshman quarterback I might have called a timeout there force them to at least make two more snaps 24 seconds and running here in the first half and North Carolina State's just gonna go down on the knee with a football one time that's what Bender does and the clock will roll out Ending the first half of play as these teams exit for the locker rooms. An interesting first half, dominated as one would expect by North Carolina State's defense, but keyed by big plays. Damon Hartman, a 46-yard field goal with six minutes left in the first, and then Jeff Bender on only his third play, a 27-yard pass to Eddie Goins. Mike Hogwood has Dick Sheridan on the field. Well, good news and bad news in that first half. The good news is, boy, the defense came up with a number of big plays again. Well, that, that last interception certainly helped. Uh, we blew one scoring opportunity earlier than that. And, of course, uh, you know, losing Terry Jordan is, is a blow to us. But I think Jeff Bender came in on his first pass, certainly had a good debut. That surprised you at all when Jeff Bender came in and uh, was really on the money? Well, his first uh, pass of his career, first play of his career in the second ball game, he threw for 46 yards. So he's a cool customer. He'll, he'll be okay. All right, Billy Ray Haynes, he's out too. That also hurts you on defense. Well, you know, our, our leader on offense and defense is out. It's going to mean the rest of them are going to have to take up the slack and suck right. it up and go. All right, good. Coach, good luck second half. That's Dick Sheridan, head coach of the NC State Wolfpack. His team leads 10 0. We'll be back with all our halftime activities here at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh in just a moment. All is brought to you by Exxon and its independent dealers and distributors who invite you to rely on new Phase 4 gasoline. 
by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. By Schick Tracer, the only razor which flexes to trace every curve on your face. By your local Carolina Chevrolet Geo dealers. In the Carolinas, the place to be is in a Chevrolet or Geo. By True Value. Got a tough job to do? They'll see you through it. You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. We're back at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, where the Wolfpack lead the North Carolina Tar Heels by a score of 10 to nothing. We are at halftime. Couple of big injuries for NC State. Billy Ray Haynes out for the game. Terry Jordan, starting quarterback, is out for the game. We've had a lot of great games this year so far in college football. One of the best was an ACC contact contest down in Atlanta. A lot of contact between Georgia Tech and Virginia. Foster's flashback. A look at last week in ACC football. Brought to you by Foster's, Australian for beer. It was the rematch that was almost a carbon copy of last year. A week ago Thursday, Virginia and Georgia Tech at Bobby Dodd Stadium. On Tech's first play from scrimmage, quarterback Sean Jones wants Greg Lester, and he's got him. 76 yards and a touchdown at 7 0. And the packed house of 44,000 loved it. But George Walsh's Cavaliers would come back late in the second quarter when Bobby Goodman finds Larry Holmes, a converted defensive back, on this 50-yard pass play. Holmes turns on the speed, and he scores, and it's all tied. 7-7 at halftime. Late in the third quarter, Goodman goes to the air again. This time he hits Tyrone Davis, 72 yards, and Virginia takes the lead, 14-7. But Georgia Tech would come back in the fourth quarter. A one-yard run for freshman Rodney Wilkerson, and then this 23-yard run for a touchdown by Jimmy Lincoln, who had 229 yards on the day. Under two minutes to play, Goodman hits Aaron Monday for a score, and it's tied at 21. But with time winding down, an encore for field goal kicker Scott Sisson of Georgia Tech. He hits the 33-yard field goal, and Tech wins it 24 to 21. An unbelievable finish. What a great win that was for Georgia Tech. By the way, the Yellow Jackets have a big game today as they are playing the Clemson Tigers in Death Valley, a game that could have a lot of implications towards the ACC championship later in the season. Well, the contest in that game and the performance by Sean Jones was really great. And, and we're going to tell you right now about our ACC Player of the Week. And I think you'll agree with me, it's a well-deserved honor. Our Exxon ACC Player of the Week from last week's action is Sean Jones. The Heisman Trophy candidate from Georgia Tech accounted for 264 yards of total offense. He was 14 of 29 in the air for 214 yards and a touchdown as the defending national champion Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets beat Virginia 24 to 21. With the Exxon ACC Player of the Week award, Exxon will donate $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. Carter Finley Stadium jam-packed today. North Carolina State leads North Carolina at halftime. This is an absolutely beautiful day for football. But you know, the story a year ago down in Atlanta when NC State played Georgia Tech wasn't the same. Believe me, I can tell you firsthand, it was stifling hot. Over 100 degrees over the field. And that's the subject of today's One for the Books. Delta, the airline of ACC country, is proud to bring you another ACC football One for the Books. Delta, we love to fly and it shows. The yearly matchup between the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and the North Carolina State Wolfpack is turning into one of the toughest defensive battles in the ACC. Going into the 1990 game, both defensive teams were ranked among the top in the country. Ken Swilling led this outstanding unit. On the other side, Jesse Campbell was starting to draw national attention along with his defensive teammates. The Georgia Tech game was, it was an exciting game because it was hard fought. It was an extremely hot day. You know, it was a, uh, well over 100 degrees down the field and, and uh, you know, I, I really I really like the way our team battled. NC State jumped on top early thanks to their defense's ability to turn the big play. All told on the day they would force four turnovers and they would send Georgia Tech's talented quarterback Sean Jones virtually into hiding with four sacks on the afternoon. They turned the tide whenever they could early. 
thing that, that I remember, the things that stand out in my mind about the game were two particular plays. Uh, one in which we fumbled the football and they picked it up and went in and I said, uh oh, here we go again. You know, and it was a real concern. North Carolina State Snake Vincent put the Wolfpack up 10 nothing early in the second quarter on this fumble recovery. But I think one of the real big plays in the game that had no impact on the game but had an impact on the momentum to the game was our block punt. We blocked the punt. And although we did not take advantage of it offensively and had no impact to the game, there was a mental lift on our sideline. And, 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 and as a coach, the only a coach would recognize that and feel that and sense that. But there was a tremendous lift confidence-wise in our football team when that play happened. It was truly a classic matchup for the defense. And as a result, this game turned constantly on big plays. This has been another ACC football one for the books brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. Great game one year ago down in Atlanta. We've got a pretty good game brewing here in Raleigh. Our score is 10 to nothing. North Carolina State leads North Carolina as we do every week. Let's take a moment now and take a look at some of the statistical leaders around the ACC. Here is the best of the ACC. Now let's take a look at Diet Pepsi's best of the ACC. There's a new rushing leader. It's Jimmy Lincoln, the freshman from Georgia Tech, averaging over 125 yards a game. Passing leader is Dave Brown of Duke, Sean Jones, and Keith West from Wake Forest are right behind him. Greg Lester continues to be the leading receiver in the league. Walter Jones of Duke is also having a great year as a receiver. Leading tackler is Tommy Thigpen of North Carolina, averaging 13 a game. Another linebacker, Mike Jermalowicz of Maryland, is second. And that's the Diet Pepsi, best of the ACC. At Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, our score at halftime, 10-0 North Carolina State over the Tar Heels of North Carolina. For the Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard, brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call Jefferson Pilot. How about Florida State and Michigan in the second quarter? Florida State has missed three extra points. They still lead it by two. Duke and Virginia are tied in the second quarter. And number 14, Florida the Gators over the Mississippi State Bulldogs, 10 0 in the second quarter. Other scores from today. It is Penn State and Boston College scoreless. Rutgers over Michigan State by a touchdown. And Baylor leads SMU 10-0. That's in the first quarter of play. Our score here at halftime is North Carolina State 10 and North Carolina nothing. North Carolina State with a couple of big injuries to Cherry, Terry Jordan, the quarterback, and Billy Ray Haynes, the linebacker. Right now, let's take a moment and salute uh, someone who excels in their sport and also in the classroom, the ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week presented by Infinity, who invites you to guest drive their full line of performance luxury automobiles. Today's award goes to Laurie Gomez, a cross country runner from North Carolina State. She's a history major and a grade point average of 3.7. Congratulations to Laurie Gomez of NC State. Steve Martin and Jack Corrigan will be along to talk about the first half of play in just a moment. The second half of ACC football is brought to you by Exxon Phase 4 Gasolines. For high performance and cleaner engines, rely on new Phase 4 Gasolines from Exxon. By Infinity, who invites you to guest drive their full line of performance luxury automobiles. By BC Headache Powder, pain reliever is what stops a headache, and BC has more pain reliever than goodies. By Lowe's, where home improvements begin. By Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Schlitz Malt Liquor, no one does it like the bull. Got on the field for the second half. No points in the first half, some opportunities. What do you have to do to score? Mike, we've got to settle down and relax and play football. We didn't play a very good first half either side of the ball. That's not the Carolina defense we're used to seeing in the last year and a half. 
Uh, certainly not the offense we've seen understanding state's got a good defense but we've got to go out and reestablish ourselves with some balance the second half uh, be more consistent on offense and go back relax and have some fun and understand what this game's all about all right mac brown head coach of north carolina as he prepares to send his team into battle here for the second half upstairs now to stephen jack thank you very much mike well you look at the first half and you look at big plays big plays usually come into uh, play when you're in a game that has a defense that is as good as nc state but on the offensive side of the ball, the big play of the half was an injury that could have uh, a bad omen for NC State down the line. Well, they lost their fine junior quarterback, Terry Jordan, to what appears to be a fractured arm. You see his left arm in that air splint as he was carried off, the, helped off the field and taken by ambulance to a hospital. That meant that Jeff Bender, a redshirt freshman from the Pittsburgh area, had to come in and... The young man showed an awful lot of poise as early on he throws on his third play from scrimmage a perfect strike a 27 yard pass to another redshirt freshman Eddie Goins that put NC State up by a count of 10 to nothing. North Carolina finally got things going late in the first half had a chance to get down to within three uh, to within three points or less than a touchdown. But Sebastian Savage with his fourth interception of the season near the goal line picked it off. NC State has now gone three and a half games without allowing a touchdown. You can see the time of possession, the advantage to NC State, but Carolina finally started to get it going late in the first half. We'll be real curious to see how they operate in their first offensive set to begin the second half. All right, Jack. They will get the ball back. It would have been an excellent opportunity for them to come up with something maybe a field goal obviously they were looking for a touchdown and then Sebastian Savage stepped in front of that how much momentum they're able to reestablish as a result of that will be important to determine on his first drive Mark Falvel to kick off for North Carolina State Eric Blunt is deep to receive for the Tar Heels it will be underway with the second half Sun Splash crowd of about 54,000, actually 53,922 on hand for today's game. Foul ball, a high floater, picked off by Blunt at the goal line. And Blunt gets his way out to about the 19-yard line before he's driven back. So that's when North Carolina will take over first and 10, trailing here by a score of 10 to nothing. Fowble has gotten two deep kickoffs now in the last two times out and Chucky Burnett comes out under center. Burnett so far this afternoon six out of 14 for 43 yards. He's had one picked off down in scoring territory at the five yard line. Means and Falkerson are the setbacks. Pass incomplete. Sailed away from Natron Means on Chucky Burnett. Now they are trying to get Burnett out on a roll in order to get him away from the state pressure. Tyler Lawrence with the coverage that time on Means coming out of the backfield. Lawrence started as a redshirt freshman. There's some great linebackers in that NC State stable, but it's reduced by one because of Billy Ray Haynes' injury. We talked about Jordan, but Haynes is out for the afternoon. He injured that ankle that he injured a week ago. Here's Means looking for a hole, runs right into Ricky Logo, right at the line of scrimmage, and there's not much running room there. A loss of about a yard will bring up third and long. Logo, the 285-pound junior out of Fort Benning, Georgia, is the strongest Wolfpack player. He has bench-pressed in their testing 550 pounds. There's they are working on another streak besides the scoring situation. And as we chronicled, they have not allowed a touchdown in three games this season and a game last year. Burnett is sacked. Clayton Henry, John Aikens in on the play. Do you think the Wolfpack is proud of their defensive prowess so far in this 91 season? That was good downfield coverage. And John Aikens with a basement sack, if you will, from down below. Here's McAllister on the kick. Three downs and out is not what Mac Brown wanted from his offense this time around. Here's the return by George. And on top of that, North Carolina State will have excellent field position as they start the second half with their offense on the field. A 35-yard punt, a three-yard return. Bernardo Harris on the tackle. And now here's Jeff Bender back out under center. Next week, 
Uh, Exxon ACC Game of the Week originates from this very same facility, part of Fidley Stadium, and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets will battle North Carolina State. Georgia Tech won the battle a year ago, 21-13 down in Atlanta. Usually good, good hard-hitting contest, defensively dominated. And this year should be no different. Maynard, the fullback, first down. Gets straight ahead or about seven yards. It'll be second and three. Big Pen and Austin Robbins have to come up and make the stop. Remember what we talked about earlier in the ball game last week the Wake Forest defense just wore down because of the amount of time they had to spend on the field and that good push of the NC State front line. North Carolina has to guard against the same problem here in the third quarter. Second down and five. Bender showing lots of poise. Red shirt freshman at quarterback. Checks off and goes to Maynard. This time Carolina read it perfectly. Kurt Brown the first to hit him with Steinbacher and Eric Gash. A one advantage for that Carolina defense although we have seen a little bit of razzle dazzle with Bender in the ball game. You still have to believe that Dick Sheridan and offensive coordinator Ted Kane want to be a little more conservative with Bender because of his inexperience than they would be if Terry Jordan's out there. North Carolina's defense has to take advantage of that. Hinton is split wide to the top on third and five. Wolfpack leading the Tar Heels by ten. At the North Carolina 43. Rushes on. Bender intercepted nearly by Massey. Massey could not hang on to it. Goins was the man who knocked the ball away, and there's going to be a penalty on the play. Well, what happened as Cookie Massey lost the ball, and then Eddie Goins nearly caught it. Massey inadvertently grabbed the face mask of Eddie Goins. We have a five-yard face mask. But that might be enough to give them a first down. Watch the end of the play. Bender floats this one. See the wobble on that ball? Massey had a shot at an interception, and right there, Yank the face mask of Eddie Goins. It's only five yards, but it's going to make it very close to the first down. They needed a little under five yards for the first. It's going to be a first down. Marked ahead to the 38-yard line. What a situation. First of all, Massey has a, a great shot at an interception and maybe a big return. Now it's NC State's ball first and 10 inside the Carolina 40. Bender. As Santee in the slot inside the shoulder of Robert Hinton. And off to Maynard. He's been featured so far since Bender came into the ball game. And he gets about three yards straight ahead to the 35-yard line. Big Penn has been in on a slew of tackles. There's a tribute right there in, in terms of the play calling in the second quarter and early on here in the third period, Steve. A tribute to the speed on the outside of Eric Gash and Jonathan Perry. They are shadowing the tailback. So State is trying to counter with the quick hits with the fullback up the middle. They've gone to the fullback 10 times. Maynard has 28 yards in those 10 carries. Second down and seven. Jordan lofts it up, wants Davenport, touchdown NC State. Big play, Charlie. Second touchdown pass of the day. 35 yards downfield to Charles Davenport. They had a blitz on as well. Number 40, Tommy Thickpin, got knocked off his blitz route, however, when he bumped into one of his own men. Bender floating it over the secondary. And Charles Davenport goes big time once again. 11.34 left to go in the third quarter. The defense did the job holding North Carolina, and Bender converts. Here's the point after kick by Hartman. It is good. And the Wolfpack now out in front. 17 to nothing over the North Carolina Tar Heels. We have 11.34 left to play in the third quarter. We're back at Carter Finley Stadium, North Carolina State, leading North Carolina 17 to nothing. Jeff Bender with his second touchdown pass of the day. He's completed three of his five attempts for 72 yards. Davenport, the receptor receiver on that. Ariel, he's having a great day as well. Here's the kick by Pavel, taken by Blunt at the six. Blunt gets a hole and runs into Pavel at the 45-yard line. Pavel has to come up and make the play after a 39-yard return by Eric Blunt. Blunt came into this game needing 
about 200 yards. One more look at the touchdown for NC State, the 35-yarder. And Jeff Bender sitting in under the pressure of Tommy Thickpin. Well, you want to talk about perfect touch right there. Just over Cliff Baskerville, who tried to defend on the play. Career high receiving yardage for Davenport. Here's Burnett scrambling out of trouble. Thomas is there to make the stop. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. May be a gain of a yard. Aikens forced him out of the pocket. It is pin your ears back time for the Wolfpack front line. Thomas and Aikens can fly from their tackle spots. You've got Henry and Lawrence, the outside backers, slash defensive ends. Chucky Burnett's going to see a lot of red in his face. Second down, nine now for North Carolina. Here's the draw to Means. He is dragged down by Ricky Logo. Or at least he stalls him until there comes a time when everybody else is able to catch up. Peyton, Henry, rather, and uh, Logo are the ones who held him up. And there's going to be no gain on the play. To complete the thought, uh, here, is, here is Means again. Well, there is nothing, there's no worse feeling for an offensive lineman than to know that a defense can play aggressive rather than reactive. They've got the tight end, Mean. Uh, Deems Bay in a slot to the right side on third down and eight. Carolina trailing by 17. Henderson in at fullback. Burnett complete the Felton. He dropped the ball. It's incomplete. Didn't have it long enough. Hunting unit back on for Carolina. Sebastian Savage on the stop. Beyond the great hit by Sebastian Savage, Chucky Burnett throws a ball to Randall Felton that's still five yards shy of the first down marker. So McAllister will be called upon again. Burnett today, 6 for 16, 43 yards, one interception. McAllister with a kick. Liddell George getting under. At the 5. Out to the 24-yard line. Turn what could have been a little bit of a disaster into a nice punt return of 19 after the 48-yard kick by Scott McAllister. When you have a return man fielding a punt inside the 10-yard line, all the coaches on the sidelines go, no, 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 no. Great play, great play when he runs it back 19 yards because they don't want him to catch that ball unless he can get it past the 20, and he did get it out to the 24. I want to thank Rich's Roffler Style Shop and Terry for our assistance in producing today's open. Thank you very much. First and 10, North Carolina State of the 23. Bender wants to throw, and he wants it all. He wants Davenport. Overthrew him against double coverage. Rondell Jones and Cliff Baskerville back. They like have the call. They like have the call. They've really used that weapon this afternoon. And that young man put that ball 55 yards in the air. He has found Charles Davenport, as did Terry Jordan five times this afternoon. The yardage is a career high for Charlie with 116 yards in receptions today. Come into the game with six receptions. So he's had a busy day, and Bender has stepped right in for the injured Terry Jordan. There is Aubrey Shaw trying to get outside. Can't do it. Wondell Jones makes a nice stop at the 23-yard line. And that Brings up third and ten for North Carolina State. Updating scores from elsewhere around the country. Florida State has missed four extra points, but they lead by eight at halftime. And Virginia starting to pull away now in a big second quarter. Our Virginia score. may be one and two, but they're a lot better team than that record might tell you. They certainly are. Our score is 17-0 North Carolina State. Wolfpack in a bit of a bind here, third and eleven. Draw play to Shaw. There's room, but tripping him up with Steinbacher. Coming back to clean it up was Thigpen, and that prevented the conversion to first down. Well, that was a big third down stop for Carolina. Keep in mind, on that previous state possession, they had stopped them on third down and then had the inadvertent face mask penalty against Cookie Massey that kept the drive alive. Steinbacher playing for the injured Dwight Hollier makes the hit to force the Kilpatrick punt. Patrick on to kick. There's what he's done today. He'll be kicking it to Eric Blunt. I mentioned he needed about 219 yards to overtake the top spot on the Carolina kickoff return yardage list. 
And he just tacked on a 39-yard return. Here's Blunt on the run. Blunt gets away from Auer and gets up to the 43-yard line. About on his nine-yard average. It's a 36-yard punt by Kilpatrick, and North Carolina will take over. We now pause for a word from your local station. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. 8.20 left in the third. The Wolfpack of North Carolina State out in front here. 17 to nothing. North Carolina with the ball. Chucky Burnett trying to get untracked. Got good field position on his own 43. Natron Means on the pitch over midfield. Blocked down by Keith Battle at the 49-yard line. Maybe the first time this afternoon or one of just a few times in which they have been able to run the student body sweep for Natron Means. Good blocking at the point of attack to get around the corner. Second down and three for North Carolina. Means again, same play. North Carolina State stunning. And here's Means dancing his way down to the 32-yard line. 17-yard gain. Excuse me, see a good block by freshman tight end Greg DeLong, number 85. You see Means slow and getting up on the near sideline. And he is going to have to come out of the ball game for North Carolina. He has just started to get it going, and they'll bring Randy Jordan back into it. But it was the block of DeLong, the freshman. We also have Mike Reed hurt on the play for NC State, and that is certainly of concern. The hard-hitting, strong safety of the Wolfpack has made some big-time hits in this ball game. If he can't continue, that would bring Tyrone Jackson into the ball game. It's at the end of the play in which Reed and Means apparently hurt each other. As Means tries to slip by, oh, you can see Reed had his leg extended. Boy, he did his left ankle or leg. William Strong is in for Reed now. First and ten, North Carolina. Jordan in the backfield for Burnett. Pass complete to the tight end, Deans May. And May gets about nine yards downfield before he's brought down by William Strong, that new man, as they immediately test it. Here's Means on the sideline. Natron Means had a tender ankle that did not play against Cincinnati. He came back last week with a good week against Army with 94 yards. Came in here needing 57 to join the 1,000 career club and move into the 20th spot among North Carolina career rushers. Second down and short. Jordan straight ahead and looks like he's got more than enough for the first down down to the 21-yard line. They're working on the right knee of Mike Reed down on the North Carolina State sidelines. Mark Thomas on the tackle there. State has not allowed a touchdown in the regular season since Tony Kennedy scored in the fourth quarter of a game at Virginia Tech last November. That yep. was five games ago. Yock and Holiday are split twins, rolling to that side, and it's deflected by Clayton Henry. Burnett was looking clearly toward the split twins, and Henry was the man who got him. Let's go to the sidelines for another injury update with Mike Hogwood. Guys, good news about Natron Means. Looks like he's okay. He's put his helmet back on. Should be back in the game in a minute. Mac Brown said last week against Army, this team learned to overcome adversity. Well, as you guys have been seeing, they've got plenty of it to overcome now, but uh, they are mounting some kind of a drive here. A good drive that they need to cash in on, obviously. Burnett now 7 out of 18, 52 yards. Here's the pitch to Natron Means, who is back, and there's nothing there. Tyler Lawrence is there to stop with Dwayne Washington and also Ray Frost driving him out of the line. They went into a one-back offensive set with two wide receivers to the far side and two tight ends in the ball game. Tried to run to the short side tight end. NC State allowed Means no ability to turn the corner. Natron wanted to take himself out of the game. And the coaches sent him back in. He's been the chief weapon on this drive so far, and it looks like he's very slowly getting into his stance. Third down and 12. Pass complete to Holiday. I think he's got the first down, too. Very close to the 10-yard line. That's where he needed to go to get it. Looks like he needed the 11. Ricky Turner on the stop, and Carolina has another first down, and they are moving the football. Well, Holiday is the guy that Chucky Burnett wants to go to. He just got that ball through the arms of Clayton Henry, 
but he found Holiday to pick up a big first down for the Heels. North Carolina can get another first down inside the one. Here they come. Jordan upended by William Strong. The defense did it again, and Jack, you know, State's going to send everybody down here in the scoring zone. Ricky Logo coming off the field now, holding his left arm. You're right. They they like the blitz very heavily in the scoring zone, particularly on first down. They sent the strong safety blitz, and William Strong got the tackle there. You see Logo going off. Daryl Beard will take his place. Second down. And Long and Chucky Burnett watch timeout. Chucky Burnett wants to talk this over on second and 15. Well, he was checking off at the line of scrimmage. And then I don't know if he felt he was going to have to check off again or that he looked up at the huddle clock and said there's only six or seven seconds left and I don't want to get a five yard delay penalty here and make it second and almost 20. So you hate to burn timeouts this early in the second half but at the same time Carolina has to score here. They definitely have to score here and that was probably pretty good judgment on Chucky's part to call the timeout. About five yards back would have put them in a 30 yard field goal situation if they didn't convert. North Carolina State leading 17 to nothing. We're in the third quarter as JP Sports brings you the Exxon ACC game of the week on a sun splash day in Raleigh North Carolina. We've had action galore big plays all over the place Hartman with a touchdown from 40 or Hartman with a field goal from 46 yards out his longest of the season to put state up three nothing then after Terry Jordan went out with an injury Jeff Bender on his third play found Eddie Goins downfield for 27 yards to make it 10 nothing and here in the third quarter Bender has found Charles Davenport for 35 yards downfield for 17 nothing. 44 remain in the third quarter. Second and 15 for North Carolina. They're at the NC State 15 yard line. Burnett passes complete to Holiday. Great catch with David Merritt right in his shirt. Down to the seven yard line, a gain of eight. Holiday running a little delayed drag underneath the linebackers. You see, the linebackers aren't sure where he is. You can see Merritt. Not knowing where Holiday was, and that enabled Burnett to make a completion. They get half of it back. Best ball he's thrown all day. Yes, Reed is back in the ball game. Two tight ends again. Third down at about seven. Burnett looking for the end zone. York touchdown, North Carolina. The first touchdown scored this season. The first touchdown scored in five games on the North Carolina State defense. Again, they went with the one back, two tight end look. Rolling left again. This time, the difference was they ran the two wide receivers. You see the reactions first to Mac Brown and Dick Sheridan. We'll talk about that touchdown one more time in a second. Here's the kick by Clint Waltney, and it is good. And North Carolina State now sees their lead diminish to 10. 17-7 with 5.03 left to go in the third quarter. The Tar Heels are back in it. North Carolina State leading North Carolina 17-7. The Tar Heels get on the scoreboard on a seven-yard pass from Chucky Burnett to Joey Yawk. And that puts the Tar Heels in much better shape. Burnett hitting four out of his last five passes. Here's Clint Waltney getting set to kick. It is Goins at the top, Barber at the bottom of your screen to receive for North Carolina State. This game all of a sudden changes complexion in a hurry. Goins underneath at the four. Right up the middle of the field and upended by Bernardo Harris as he went ahead to the 25-yard line, and that's where North Carolina State will take over offensively. And for the, as you take a look at the scoring numbers on that drive, best drive of the afternoon, somebody finally crosses the goal line against NC State. I was going to say for the first time in Jeff Bender's time as a quarterback here at NC State, he's in a situation where he definitely has to move the ball. They can't afford to go three downs and out now. North Carolina has... A little bit of momentum going for them. The defense finally getting a reward. Davenport to the top. 
And off goes to Maynard, the fullback. Straight ahead, he's just shy of the 30-yard line. Gain of about four on the play for Maynard. On the tackle, Roy Parker for North Carolina. Pick up a four. North Carolina State will get wide receivers galore into this thing. They'll change their entire backfield except their quarterback on just about every other play. Dick Sheridan concerned. The momentum swinging toward North Carolina right now. His team needs to pick up a first down. Second and five. Carolina with a blitz on. Here's Barber. Great shoestring tackle by Tommy Thigpen to stop him at the line of scrimmage. Well, Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Carolina, says let's put some pressure on him. Gas chasing and Thigpen stepping up there, the two linebackers who were on the stunt moves. And Tabby Thigpen, the junior out of Dumfries, Virginia, has really carried this defense with the absence of Dwight Hollier. That's Reggie Lawrence to the top of your screen. Eddie Goins, who has a touchdown pass reception from Bender earlier today, is to the bottom. Bender on third down, going over the middle, complete to Goins at the 44. Brought down immediately by Rondell Jones at the 44-yard line, but it's a 13-yard game. I talked when Eddie Goins caught the touchdown pass from Jeff Bender in the first half about them doing that last year on the scout team when they were redshirt freshmen, or when they were true freshmen actually being redshirted. He's comfortable throwing the ball to Eddie because he probably did that all year. And so that's why in crucial situations, that's where he looks. Gary Downs is in at tailback. Goins caught his first touchdown pass today out of Lakeland, Florida. First and 10, North Carolina State. Here's Downs. Downs gets over the 50. Flattened by J.R. Bolden, but he's very, very close to a first down. Let's go back down to the sidelines with Mike Hogwood. Guys, you know Terry Jordan went to the hospital and had that broken arm set. He wouldn't stay there. He's back. He's in the locker room now changing into his street clothes. He wants to get down on the sidelines and cheer on his team. And what to many of these players is obviously the biggest game of the year. And even though he can't play, Terry Jordan with a broken arm doesn't want to miss the end of it. His team, his offensive unit that he's guided through the first three and a half games on the field looking for second and two. Wolfpack leading here by 10. Hand off to the fullback straight ahead. That's Maynard going over the 30, over the 40 yard, 44 yard line. And it's going to be another first down for North Carolina State, so they keep moving. Well, they have accomplished the first half of what they wanted to do regain field position, blunt the Carolina momentum. If they can keep grinding away on this clock and put more points on the board, they're going to leave Carolina in a real serious catch up mode on offense in the fourth period. 208 left in the third as the Wolfpack looks at first and 10. Bender's checking off. Bender on the option. Calls his own number and gets ahead five yards. Gets out to about the 35 yard line. Well, he's not the guy you think of as being the option quarterback. He's not quite as agile as Jordan. He's a bigger kid at 6'4 and more than 200 pounds. But he puts it away. He put a heck of a move on Rondell Jones. Got nearly 10 yards. Tommy Thigpen, who missed a lot of practice time this week. And boy, he took a helmet from Greg Maynard right on the left thigh. Thigpen suffered two injuries, a badly cut face and body bruises after that Army game. NC State going straight ahead again this time. It's going to be to Maynard. He's got the first down. And once again, Jeff Bender, like Terry Jordan did in the first half, carrying out the option fake part of that play, got it right in the chops from Eric Gash. So it's another first down for the Wolfpack. Leading 17 to 7 with a minute left in the third quarter. Maynard and Downs the setbacks. Here's Downs. And Downs is hit by Steinbacher as he approached the line of scrimmage. Not much gain on the play. Parker also in on the stop with Kerry Mock, two freshmen, Thomasville, North Carolina. Well, right now, Carolina playing not only without Dwight Hallier, but also without Tommy Thigpen as 
Kerry Mock has come in at that other linebacker spot. NC State going right at that inexperienced soft middle right now. Second down and seven. And Jeff Bender wants timeout. The game clock showed, or rather the play clock showed eight seconds, and Bender looked like he wanted to check off. He'll come over to the sidelines and talk things over with Dick Sheridan. Well, they are in Damon Hartman's range now, as we have seen throughout his career. Hartman has the ability to convert from beyond 50 yards, but NC State here really wants to come away with seven points. If they come back to a 17-point lead, it is going to be very difficult for North Carolina. The Gamecocks playing at Greenville with the advantage early on against East Carolina. I'll take this opportunity to say hello to a viewer in Columbia, South Carolina, who's watching today, Mrs. Kathleen Trotter. She is the mother of head linesman Charles Neely, who's working today's game today. And uh, our thoughts go out to her. And her son wanted her to know that he'd be thinking about it today. Well, the way guys have been banged around this afternoon, we would have been disappointed, really, Steve, if that didn't happen. Because when you get into these emotional rivalries like the Carolina State game is, you know the contact level gets taken up one more notch. And it, uh, most coaches will tell you that's impossible to do, but somehow they managed to do it in games like this. Well, Terry Jordan is headed to the sidelines. Billy Ray Haynes is headed to the sidelines. Natro Means went out once, but he's back. Mike Reed went out once for NC State. He's back. Second and about eight. Bender looking downfield, gets hit as he throws. Intended for Davenport, but he got unloaded upon by Kurt Brown. Kurt Brown, a redshirt junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, coming from the blind side. What they call their five position defensive down lineman, which means that generally he stays on the line of scrimmage and reads run first, but that time they turned Brown loose and he nearly forced Bender into an even poorer pass. Third down and eight coming. Bender, four out of eight, 85 yards, two TDs. NC State leading here, 17-7. We're in the third, 12 seconds left. Shaw. Shaw straight ahead, down to the 20-yard line where he has another Wolfpack first down. Great block by Greg Maynard, the fullback leading on the delay, and then a shifty move by Aubrey Shaw to pick up a first down. That third down conversion rate again by North Carolina State, so impressive. Watch it coming right at you. Watch number 33, Greg Maynard, right there with the block on Rick Steinbacher. Nice block by Claude Holly as well, and NC State keeps on rolling. Both teams score touchdowns in the third, and as we take the turn to the fourth, it's NC State leading North Carolina 17-7. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, for the 81st renewal of the battle for supremacy in the Old North State. North Carolina State leading North Carolina 17 to 7. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood bringing you the action in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. JP Sports providing all of the coverage this afternoon. 15 minutes to go. North Carolina State in business at the North Carolina 20 yard line, first and 10. Bender gives to his fullback, who is upended by Cookie Massey. Maynard was tackled at the 20-yard line, and Massey was the man who made the initial trip up. Well, much like NC State likes to do a stunt or a blitz move in the scoring zone, here comes Carolina with a safety blitz, and Cookie Massey disrupts that play as he comes in unimpeded and put the good pop on Maynard before he could get his acceleration going. Second and nine and a half, thanks to Massey, who missed most of the week in practice with an eye infection. Second to Dexter Davis in interceptions a year ago. Bender checking off. Carolina blitzing. Here's the pass to the end zone for Hinton. Incomplete flag on the play on Baskerville. It's a 15 yard penalty in college football if they call interference. Did he call interference or did he call holding? Whatever it was, it went against Baskerville trying to guard against Hinton on the fade route. Right there, hanging on to him. 
Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And it's the only time, or one of the few times, I should say, that it is not a half the distance to the goal penalty. They will give you as much of the 15 yard penalty as they can on pass interference. So rather than it being first down inside the 10, it's first down inside the 5. And of course, rather than under the old proceeding being first down at the 1, at the spot of the foul, correct. First and goal, North Carolina State of the North Carolina 5. Maynard, the fullback, fumbles into the end zone, possession to North Carolina. NC State has done such a great job of not turning the ball over this year, and Greg Maynard going in for perhaps what would have been a clinching touchdown, coughs up the football, Carolina recovers. The hit was made by Robbins and Thickpen. And Thomas Smith comes up with the football. Watch Tommy Thickpen, number 40, right there, stripping the ball away from Greg Maynard. And that happened in just the right area for North Carolina at the one. Had he crossed the plane, it would have been a touchdown because the path was wide open. Carolina's got a player down injured it was th it is thick Ben the guy who made the play who got hurt the toll has been high this afternoon both teams losing players thick Ben down on the ground looking like he'll be there for a little bit as gash looks it over there's Mac Brown his defense has done the deed and then never a good sight when they bring the stretcher out so we'll sort out the injury to Tommy Thigpen as Mac Brown contemplates his offense taking over. We'll be back after this. That is Tommy Thigpen down around the three yard line. He has been injured and they are getting ready to put him on the stretcher to take him out. Let's take a look at the play one more time when Thigpen strips the ball from Greg Maynard. He is right in the center of your screen now moving from the right side to the center. He is so extended here in the effort to make the strip. See, his momentum's going one way, and Maynard's momentum going another way. Y you hate to speculate on, on what it might have been, but he certainly had his shoulder and neck area exposed as he made the contact on Greg Maynard. And the way they've been carrying, there's Dwight Hollier, his partner on the inside, who has yet to play here in this 91 season after being injured during the summer. Well, what a blow to the Carolina defense to have your quite frankly your two best defensive players now out of the out of the lineup for who knows how long. So you've got Ray Jacobs and Rick Steinbacker and then true freshman Kerry Mock rotating in there and that's going to weigh heavily on Mac Brown's mind. He was looking at a team that last year stayed relatively injury free and this year sees his two defensive leaders Hollier and Thigpen out. Big Pen likely is out for the rest of the day, and we'll check and see as that'll be a continuing story as to his continuing availability to the Tar Heels for the remainder of the season. He's a junior out of Dumfries, Virginia. Caused a fumble that led to a North Carolina field goal that sealed their win over Army. Second team all ACC with one interception a year ago. He had 16 tackles against Army, and he was headed toward a similar total this afternoon against North Carolina State. And they are taking every precaution here, Jack. Well, it again makes you feel like it's a a, a neck injury or of some kind. They they want to immobilize him as thoroughly as they can, so that when they do move him, they do not create any more problems. While they continue to attend to Mr. Thigpen. Remind you again of our game, our ACC Exxon Game of the Week next week here with Jefferson Pilot Sports. It'll be the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who will be battling Clemson later on today against this NC State Wolfpack. And certainly the outcome of this afternoon's games for both those teams will weigh heavily on next week's contest. 
the loser next week could find themselves up against it in the conference chase. Certainly true. North Carolina State and Georgia Tech down through the years have always had great defensive battles, and this game, Jack, has turned into just that. An excellent defensive battle. North Carolina has answered the call here in the second half and come up with their only big drive of the day. They have just scored a touchdown late in the third quarter to make it 17-7. And now with 14.06, we have an extended stoppage of play as Tommy Thigpen is moved very carefully from the field. When a player get injured, gets injured in that fashion, no matter what allegiance you seem to have, you appreciate their effort, no matter what uniform they're playing in. And the crowd very appreciative of that. See how they've got the head taped and now they've removed, they removed the face mask. That was part of the delay because you don't want to take off that helmet, which would certainly move that neck around. So they removed the face mask to make things easier in terms of communication and getting stuff to Tommy. And then you tape the helmet right to the board to totally immobilize the young man. And our thoughts are with Tommy, and we hope that all this is is just precaution and that he is not seriously injured. Not a good sight at all. You see the ice bag on Austin Robbins' arm. We've seen Natron Means come off the field a couple of times. There's Rondell Jones with the cast on. It has been a, a tough war throughout this afternoon. We have seen players from both sides be the recipient of that little extra hit because the emotion is that strong in this game between State and Carolina. North Carolina State has already lost two players for the game and possibly longer. Terry Jordan, their starting quarterback, out. And uh, Billy Ray Haynes is out. And look what is happening in Ann Arbor. They're scoring a point a minute up there, it seems. Florida State leading. Northwestern has marched on top of Wake Forest early. And East Carolina still trailing South Carolina. Chucky Burnett on first down, pass deflected on the play, and the deflection is done by Lauren Pinkman. Now they have tried to run that naked bootleg action with Chucky Burnett. They have had a modicum of success with it. But one of the advantages for that state defense is Clayton Henry's 6'3", Lauren Pinckney is 6'4", Tyler Lawrence is 6'3". They can put some tall bodies out there against Burnett. Second down and 10 for Chucky Burnett. Has some time, then it diminishes, and he's going down in the grass for Clayton Henry. Henry tackles him, and they'll mark him down. Excellent coverage downfield by Mike Reed and Sebastian Savage. He wanted to go deep up the middle to Corey Holiday and had no ability to do so. And Tyler Lawrence comes up with his first sack of the season. NC State with a couple of quarterback sacks this afternoon. They are into double figures in that category on the year. And the third down yardage is in double figures for North Carolina. Third and 16. They trail by 10 in the fourth quarter. Big blitz is on. Burnett unloads. Puts it out of bounds, out of the reach of Corey Holiday. But Tyler Lawrence was there again. And Chucky Burnett is still down. Burnett is down, and the official is going to call for help from the sidelines. The medical personnel in this game strain to the limit. Burnett gets up under his own power, and the punting unit will come on. I don't know what happened, whether they expected Lawrence to bite on the play fake or drop into coverage. But he just had one of those free shots at the quarterback. Forced Chucky Burnett's pass to go wide to the right, well out of bounds. Burnett improved his percentage considerably on that touchdown drive. Now watches from the sidelines as McAllister punts it away. Liddell George at the 44. And George is upended right there by John Bradley. Side linebacker, a 42 yard punt by McAllister, the eight yard return by Liddell George, and it'll be NC State ball in North Carolina territory at the 48 and a half yard line. Wolfpack fans letting their sentiments be known. Their team leading with 13.08 left to go in the fourth quarter of play, 17 7. A pair of touchdown passes. 
Jeff Bender to Eddie Goins and Charles Davenport around a Damon Hartman field goal. Now for NC State's points, here's Bender to throw. Bender wants Davenport, overthrows him. Thomas Smith on the coverage, along with Jimmy Hitchcock. With the good field position on the Carolina side of the 50-yard line, Bender wanted to get it all again. Had more time than he thought. Really could have sat there a little longer and let Davenport get further downfield before he let it go. Because the more time you give Charles to run by the secondary, the better your chances are. He had a step on him that time. Second down and 10. Maynard and Shaw are the setbacks. And off goes to Maynard, straight ahead. Not an awful lot there. He gets out to the 45-yard line. Down to the sidelines we go to Mike Hogwood. Guys, about Tommy Thickpen, he is being taken to a hospital even as we speak. You saw the precaution they took getting him off the field. That's because he lost some of the feeling in his body, and uh, he has a, a neck injury, and they're going to go and check it out. Beyond that, the uh, North Carolina doctors are having absolutely no comment, but they're very concerned, as obviously, about Tommy Thickpen, and we certainly hope for the best for him. Third down and seven for North Carolina State, leading by 10. That's the Carolina 45. Bender to throw. As Goins open over the middle, can't make the catch. Good looking pattern by Goins. Ball a little high for him, but it was a catchable ball at around the 32 yard line. Good blocking by State to pick up the Carolina Blitz. And it almost looked like Eddie misjudged that ball, that he extended a half a stride too soon and wasn't able to gather himself towards the ball. So Kilpatrick in punt formation. He's had a good day. 43-yard average. That's over his season's average. And there's Eric Blunt to receive. Kilpatrick that goes into the end zone. Trying to get it to die a little bit, but North Carolina will get the ball back at their own 20-yard line with 12-10 left to go on the fourth. North Carolina State by 10. You got the whole situation right there. The scoreboard at Carter Finley shows it all. 17-7. North Carolina State. JP Sports Transportation is furnished by Budget Car and Truck Rental, the official car and truck rental company of the Atlantic Coast Conference. A head knocker here today in Raleigh as we expected. Lots of injuries. Tommy Thigman out for the game. Terry Jordan out for the game. Billy Ray Haynes out for the game. Chucky Burnett is in there at quarterback. First and ten for Carolina at their own 20. Here's the pass complete to Yaw. Got the first down up to the 33-yard line. A gain of 13. Sebastian Savage helped out on the tackle with Tyler Lawrence. I really think that's what Daryl Moody has decided he has to do. The offensive coordinator for Carolina says Chucky is just not as comfortable getting real deep in the offense. So we'll go back to the little slant passes, a little stop up routes. Even though it's going to eat up time, that's our best chance to get more points on the board. Haynes and Falkerson in the backfield. Burnett now calls his own number and gets nowhere. Tried to sprint out of the grasp of Ricky Logo, who's returned to action. And Grasp that right, actually that left wrist. See him hanging that left arm down, the big nose man for the Wolfpack. But any time they can force Carolina into these second and long, third and longs, very, very difficult for that Tar Heel offense. Second and 12, this one is. State showing blitz. Burnett steps up in the pocket and gets sacked for a loss to the 29-yard line. That's Mark Thomas in there for the stop. Here's our schlitz Montlicker game summary. North Carolina State up by 10. Losing Tommy Thickpen is going to be a real problem for him. The first touchdown, though, of the season against that NC State defense. Terry Jordan gone for the year, more than likely. But Jeff Bender, the redshirt freshman, has played very well in his place. Third down coming. 14 for Chucky Burnett, down by 10. Tyler Lawrence, outstanding tackle. He's got two sacks this quarter. At the 20-yard line, in comes the punting unit. 
I can imagine a conversation on the sidelines. Dick Sheridan telling his defensive unit, you guys have to step up and take over control of this football game. Be mad that you've given up a touchdown. Kick by McAllister is a beauty. George at the 31. And Met at the 37. The tackle made by Bernardo Harris. A 48-yard kick by McAllister. He's had some boomers today, just a six-yard return. Well, he's a definite pro prospect. Averaged more than 42 yards in his career now for Carolina, and he has been outstanding this afternoon. So North Carolina State will take over first and 10 at their own 37 yard line. 10 04 showing on the clock on the Wolfpack with a 10 point lead. Downs is the tailback. He'll get the call. Downs, the ball squirts loose. Carolina's got it. the football big hit on downs after he had good yardage downs trying to work for a little extra and eric gash stripped the ball loose kurt brown falls on it two second half turnovers here by nc state carl torpers said we needed turnovers and north carolina has come up with them here in the second half to keep this game in doubt one took back what could have been a potential touchdown. This one puts Carolina in field position at the 43 of NC State. Randy Jordan can't turn the corner. Mike Reed is there to meet him with David Merritt. Big play after big play by that young man out of South Carolina. Missed all of last year after hurting his neck in an automobile accident. But he has done a great job in the spot that was held so well by Jesse Campbell the past couple of years. Oh, the problem. Ball still down there. Carolina's got it. That ball was on the ground for about five seconds. Nobody see, saw it move beyond the offensive lineman back into the backfield. Well, well, those who did see it couldn't get to it, including you and I. Brown kicked it backwards, and it's just laying there. <laughs> kicked again before finally Greg DeLong, the tight end, fell on the ball. Carolina going in reverse here. Third and 15. Burnett. Pass intended for DeLong. Throw while he wasn't looking. He was engaged there with Clayton Henry. The defense has done it again, and listen to the crowd at Carter Finley. McAllister is on one more time. Liddell George deep. He's made a lot of appearances this afternoon. George calling for the fair catch. Surrounds it at the 17. Let's go down to the sidelines after this 31-yard punt to Mike Hogwarts. Guys, I'm with Billy Ray Haynes, who was injured earlier in the day and is out for the day. But, Billy Ray, you've got to be proud of the way this defense has uh, risen up and held up. Yeah, we got some banged up bumps and bruises early in the game. And, um, you know, some of the people have been able to fight it back coming, you know. And um, our defensive line is really getting a good pass for us right now. And uh, that, I think that's the key of the game right now. Is they're, they're, they're getting two Burnett back there. All right, we hope to see you back real soon. Billy Ray Haynes. First and 10 for North Carolina State. At their own 17 yard line. Maynard, the fullback, trying to protect the football up over the 20. Clock shows 8.39 and running. Roy Parker and Kurt Brown will recover the fumble that gave North Carolina momentary possession. In on the tackle. Excuse me, Steve. Now is the time that they really want to try and grind it out. The more they can knock those seconds off the clock, the better the chances of NC State going to 4-0. They want to get at least three first downs on this drive, and if they can do it taking three downs each time, so much the better. Second and seven. Delay calls to downs. He's up over the 20 to about the 23. We might get a holding call deep in the Carolina backfield, or in the uh, state backfield. Jacobs and Steinbach are the linebackers. 71 with a takedown. First time they really identify people here. 
You don't want to point at anybody, but this is who did it. Scott Adele. Watch from the right side of your screen. Yeah, I think he had a hold of <laughs> Austin Robbins. I mean, I don't want to say for sure, but he did look like his jersey was a little extended. So Adele gets called for the penalty. The hold will march North Carolina State back inside their own 10-yard line. And it's going to be third down, a second down, and about 19 to go. Adele George is in the backfield, so you're thinking pass with Jeff Thunder here. They go draw to Aubrey Shaw. Jonathan Perry makes the shoestring tackle as he crosses the 10 out to about the 14. It'll be a gain of about four for Aubrey Shaw. We haven't seen much of Anthony Barber this afternoon. We've seen a lot of Gary Downs. We've seen a lot more of the fullback that I think North Carolina State wanted to expose today, and that's because of the fine outside pursuit of North Carolina's defense, as you pointed out. And it, and it might be a little bit of using the, the tailbacks as decoys this afternoon. Third down and long, 14. North Carolina State trying to protect the 10-point lead on the football. George gets the call, pops it up. North Carolina's got it. Rick Steinbacher will pick it up. And North Carolina is presented with a golden opportunity. Well, the turnover battle has been advantage NC State throughout the season. But just as he was going down, Liddell George, I think he saw Eric Gash coming, and he wanted to protect the ball, and instead he popped the ball loose. And Steinbacher, the sophomore out of Greenville, South Carolina, comes up with the third fumble recovery of the fourth quarter. Credit Michael Payne with delivering the hit that caused the fumble. First and 10, Carolina. Here comes Natron Means to the 15. Counts is in on the tackle with Gianna Moore. No gain on the play. 6.48 showing on the clock. Mac Brown getting anxious. His, knee, his team needs to punch one in here. They have converted every time inside the 20 this year when the game was on the line. Blunt and Yawk split to the top. Holiday to the bottom. Burnett to throw. Quick shot, he has to get rid of it in a hurry, intercepted. Intercepted by David Merritt. And David Merritt should get half that interception to Mark Thomas, who from the blind side, number 53, belted Chucky Burnett, and it changed the trajectory of the throw. Made it a lot lower and put it right in Merritt's wheelhouse. Right there. State takes over again with 6.21 left to go. We've got a break in the action and the Wolfpack leading by 10. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium. There's the situation in our Exxon ACC game of the week. North Carolina State up by 10. The North Carolina sideline is really looking down after their inability to cash in on an excellent opportunity inside the 15 yard line. Chucky Burnett shaking his head just through the interception cost his team a potential score. Here's Bender giving to Maynard the half of the fullback and with North Carolina State fumbling on two out of the last three possessions, nothing is safe. Well, they're in a situation here now, too, and it'd be interesting to watch the huddle clock in these situations because they may want to try and, and snap this ball with just seconds remaining on the 25-second clock. Florida State maintaining its advantage early in the fourth quarter and Virginia after spotting Duke three points has scored 34 unanswered and Northwestern is crushing the Deacons. 17-7 here with North Carolina State leading looking at a second down and six. And off now goes to Gary Downs and he's wrapped up by Ray Jacobs. A rather convincing tackle as he crossed the 12 yard line after the 13 maybe a gain of one. Greg Maynard trying to provide the block here. He gets the block on Steinbacher, but Jacobs roams free. You make that Jonathan Perry who was blocked in the play, but the sophomore Jacobs out of Hampstead, North Carolina with the hit. Third and five for the Wolfpack. They lead here by 10. Clock shows 5-10 left. 
Jeff Bender, the redshirt freshman, playing in place of Terry Jordan. Jordan fractured his left arm early. Big hit on the line of scrimmage by North Carolina's Austin Robbins, who's played an outstanding ball game this afternoon to drive downs back to the 11-yard line and bring the punt unit on for North Carolina State. Now, you've got a great punt returner in Eric Blunt. You've got a situation here where State knows they've got to get this punt away. I'm real curious if Carolina is going to just go with the return rather than the block. They've got the 10 men up again. I still think they're going to go for the return. They need field position. Kilpatrick in his own end zone. They're sending people. Blunt at the 48. Headed for the sidelines, Tyler Lawrence drives him out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a 36-yard punt and a three-yard return. We have 418 left to go here at Carter-Finley Stadium. North Carolina State jumped out to a 10-0 lead. They've been scored upon by a touchdown for the first time this season, but they have held sway since then with great defense. 17-7 as they look to tack on their fourth win of the season and continue their streak against North Carolina to four straight wins. Chucky Burnett rolls left. Looking for Holiday, overthrows it. Sebastian Savage is there in cover. Well, they like to run Burnett for some reason. He seems to throw the ball better on the run to his left than his right. Although, of course, with the ball aligned on the right hash mark, if you do the roll, you've got to go that way. But they seem to like to do that a lot. Tried to square his shoulders up to make a good throw, but there was good coverage anyway. That was as much a throwaway as an incomplete pass. Here's what he's done today, the two interceptions. One of them real costly on our last drive. Burnett in the pocket and down. Mark Thomas with the big sack. He's come up with big play after big play. He and Tyler Lawrence have had an outstanding day. Well, he's a former outside linebacker who has really progressed as a down lineman. He just went right through Andrew, Andrew Oberg. He just said, you are not going to deny me access to my target. Sixth sack of the day by the North Carolina State defense. Third down and 15. Tar Heels trail by 10. Pass over the middle. Incomplete intended for Holiday. Reed and Washington got there at the same time. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you come into Mr. Reed's neighborhood, you better be wearing armor. Watch the pop by Mike Reed. The ball's a little high. Look at him time himself. He thought, do I have a shot at the ball? Well, I'm not sure, so I'm going to take that receiver down, and he did. No cardigans in that neighborhood. McAllister's back in punt formation. George back to receive. Their catch called for by George at the 16-yard line. And that's where NC State will take over. A 34-yard kick by McAllister with 323 remaining in the third quarter, fourth quarter of play. North Carolina State leading 17-7. It's been a story of injuries. It's been a story of hard hits. And in the second half, it's been a story of turnovers. That's Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator there, talking to his troops on the sidelines. What a fine job he has done running that defense for NC State the past couple of years. Four times North Carolina has had the ball in North Carolina State territory, and they've come up scoreless. Fullback gets the call on first down. Looks like Maynard up over the 20-yard line. Carolina has only two timeouts left, so that further hampers their efforts here. And State will take as much time. The huddle clock now starts again. Matt Brown looking at the situation. His team down by 10 with three to go. Has to use his timeouts judiciously. Second down and seven after the three-yard game. Bender looked right up at the huddle clock. How much time do I have left? And off to Maynard. Straight ahead. Tackled by Steinbacher as he crosses the 25-yard line. He'll be out to the 26, and he'll be two yards shy of the first down. They snap that with three seconds left on the huddle clock. They'll do it again. Scott Adell hobbles off the field at right tackle. He's replaced by sophomore Eric Taylor, number 60. Maynard has been a workhorse today. 20 carries, 63 yards. And a fumble. Third down and two. 
Wolfpack sitting on a 10 point lead. They need a first to keep this thing alive. Maynard, surprise, hit at the line and driven back. Jonathan Perry delivered a big hit at the line of scrimmage that drove him back inside the 24 yard line. Not enough for the first down. In fact, lost yardage on the play. And it'll bring up fourth down. A timeout now called by North Carolina. That's Scott Adell, who we told you got hurt. How much has Greg Maynard been a part of this game coming into game number four on the season for the Wolfpack? There are three fullbacks that carried the game the ball 18 times total. And Maynard has carried it 21 times here this afternoon. Call it good defense by North Carolina. Call it a decoy by North Carolina State. But the fullback has gotten some work. North Carolina State next week will see this Wolfpack one more time against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And you'll see it on most of these JP Sports ACC stations at 12 noon. Our Exxon ACC game of the week. The Yellow Jackets and the Wolfpack. We expect it to be as hard hitting as this one. Oh, you know that. Georgia Tech playing Clemson this afternoon. North Carolina State trying to nail on its fourth win and its second win, importantly, in ACC action, having beaten Wake Forest a week ago. Picked a better day for a football game. Some great football matchups going on along the country. Here's the punting unit on. Kilpatrick getting set to punt. And Eric Blunt is going back to receive. 2.02 left to go in the football game with North Carolina State leading 17 to 7 over North Carolina. An important punt coming up. Blunt will get good field position and the Tar Heels will try for the fifth time this afternoon to operate in or near Wolfpack territory. The Tar Heels showing 10. They're coming this time. He gets it away. No flags on the play. Fair catch. Blunt at the 43. Kilpatrick did a masterful job of getting rid of it. A 31-yard kick. Well, the fans down below us thought that either Jimmy Hitchcock or Lawrence Winslow hit Kilpatrick. They actually hit each other. And Mr. Kilpatrick did his best to try and draw a flag. Eric Blunt called for the fair catch in part to stop the clock. 155 left to go. Carolina trailing by 10. They have the ball at their own 43. Burnett to the sidelines. Complete to Yacht at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of five. Stops the clock with 151 left. Joey Yock, his father, Ray Yock, a coach in the Canadian Football League and the USFL. Brother Jimmy was a pretty good defensive back with the Tar Heels. Second and five coming up for North Carolina. They have two timeouts. One timeout remaining. Burnett, most time he's had this afternoon. Complete to Holiday. What a pass by Burnett. Through two defenders, Washington covering on the play. The ball down at the 38-yard line. And Dwayne Washington able to wrap up Corey Holiday as he catches this ball between Washington and Ricky Turner. Well, come back without a huddle. Burnett again on first and ten. It is complete to Natron Means. He scurries to get out of bounds at the 31 yard line. It'll be a gain of seven on the play. It stops the clock again with 133 left to go. Carolina moving methodically down the field. This time they will huddle up as the clock was stopped. Burnett with two straight completions. At four out of five in Carolina's only touchdown drive of the day. The first touchdown scored upon NC State this year. There's the situation. Second and three. Burnett checking off on the line. Throws under pressure, hits Randall Felton complete at the 17-yard line. Mark Thomas got there a half a count late. Deep curl route to Randall Felton. Burnett steps up on the rollout and fires a strike. Felton nearly had that ball stripped away by Savage. Pass complete to the 17. Burnett, draw play to Means. Means still on his feet. 
and dragged down fumbles out of bounds to stop the clock at the 13 yard line with a minute 18 left. It is a gain all told for as much time as he spent on his feet at five yards. And they mark it out where he last had possession of the ball not where he fumbled it out of bounds. But I tell you what the fumble out of bounds didn't hurt. Nope. Good as a first down. Second down and six. Burnett in trouble calls his own number hesitates and falls inside the 10 yard line to the nine clock still moving on the minute and eight left and he's going to be shy of the first down Carolina will have to line up quickly they'll be third and one there you see the clock and off Fulkerson he's got it Fulkerson with the carry his second of the day down to the seven yard line first down and North Carolina will take their last remaining timeout. Well, I don't know if they called their last timeout or if that's the officials' timeout to stop the uh, clock for the first down. It is. I think you're right. Yeah, it is going to be. Bring, the, they're going to bring the chains into measure, so this will not go as a charged timeout yet to Carolina. It's a break here that they can send Burnett quickly to the sidelines to try and get a few plays together if they have or have not made the first down. It looks like. They've got it. They do by half a football. So they're first and goal at the seven. North Carolina with one timeout remaining. 49 seconds left to go. Burnett on the day. 15 of 32. 130 yards. A touchdown and two interceptions. Trying to rally his team back from a 10-point deficit. Mac Brown and 10 on the sidelines. Burnett has his play. Holiday split wide to the top. He's got to pick up the pace. The clock is running. Felt lined up on the wrong side. 39 seconds left to go in the game. Burnett back. Pass complete to Means. He can't get in, but is knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line by Mike Reed. That stops the clock with 29 seconds left. That was the race not only for the corner of the end zone, but the sidelines. I think when Nate Trone realized he wasn't going to get in, he said, I've got to stop the clock. He just barely got out at the two and a half yard line where it'll be second down and goal. Watch the end of this play when Means realizes he is not going to get to that pylon. Now he's running horizontally. Let me get out of bounds. The lunge with the football. Second and goal. Pitch to Means. Dropped in the backfield. He recovers. Bad pitch. And they got a call that time out now with 22 seconds remaining. Well, they, they finally do the call the timeout now with 20 seconds left. Chucky Burnett short arms this pitch. I don't know if he saw the fullback in his way or there was some problem. Daryl Moody, the offensive coordinator, just disappeared from the screen, as you see. Mac Brown. And Chucky Burnett discussing what they're going to do. The only thing I could think of on that play, Steve, was that as Burnett made the reverse pivot away from center to make the toss to Means, out of the corner of his eye, he saw the fullback going by who was going to be the lead blocker and was afraid of hitting him with the pitch and kind of pulled his arms back as he tossed the ball and he ended up bouncing the pitch. It was missed time. Dick Sheridan has seen his defense hold on the last four times that North Carolina has gotten the ball in his territory. And this time would seal it for sure. Third down coming and goal. It's at the six yard line of North Carolina State. Well, the other factor, too, is by making them take more play, more plays to score. Even if Carolina scores on this play and successfully does an onside kick, they're still up against it time wise because they have no timeouts left. And they have not executed a play today, I don't believe, over 30, over 20 yards. Third down and goal. Burnett. Quick drop. Pass is intercepted. Sebastian Savage out of the hands of Joey Yacht. And it's a foot race to the end zone. What an appropriate finish to this game. Sebastian Savage. 97 yards for the score. Burnett get hit just as he throws.
throws the ball right up the middle. The ball goes off the hands of Joey Yock, and Sebastian Savage with his second goal line interception goes 99 yards. Well, they're gonna say 97. We'll get an official number somewhere along the line. Whatever, it has to rank up as one of the longest interception returns in NC State history. Sebastian Savage puts this one out of shape. 23-7, Hartman on for the point after. It's good. Four seconds remain, but North Carolina is headed for their fourth straight win over the Tar Heels. We'll be right back. This Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by Exxon Phase 4 Gasolines. For high performance and cleaner engines, rely on new Phase 4 Gasolines from Exxon. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call Jefferson Pilot. By Diet Pepsi and Caffeine-Free Diet Pepsi. You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. By Roses, more ways to save every day. That's our promise. By Haynes Activewear. Haynes underwear and Haynes socks. Nothing else feels so right. By Delta, the airline of ACC country. We love to fly, and it shows. And by Schlitz Malt Liquor. No one does it like the bull. Play comes back. North Carolina returns the kick, but the ball game ends. North Carolina State wins it 24 to 7 over North Carolina. And if you're thinking that that 99 yard interception return by Sebastian Savage was a record, or you're going to be wrong by about six I yards. The longest pass interception play, 105 yards by Howard Turner in 1946 against Duke. Let's go down to the sidelines where Mike Hogwood has victorious head coach Dick Sheridan. Yeah, pretty happy coach he is, too. Boy, uh, that interception by Sebastian Savage really icing on the cake there. Well, it was. We should have iced it uh, very early. Early in the fourth quarter when we fumble on the one that would have made it 24 to 7 we we turned it over two more times to keep it close and that interception return made it uh, made it a little better how about this defense huh? keep coming up with the big plays and a great effort and offensively for three quarters i thought we played very well fourth quarter we we bottled up we got conservative didn't want to turn the ball over and that's exactly what we did turn it over you have to be proud of a guy like jeff bender who comes in and gets one of the biggest rivals of the year north carolina really keeps his cool and throws a couple of touchdown passes uh, i think the the fact that our offense uh, responded to jeff and our defense responded to the situation without billy ray uh, add some satisfaction to this. We're going to miss them the rest of the way, but uh, at least this one game, the people in their places really came through. All right, Dick Sheridan, congratulations. <laughs> what a smile on his face, huh? As he heads to the locker room to join his teammates. Now let's go upstairs to Steve. Thank you very much. Jeff Bender comes through with a couple of touchdown passes, a Damon Hartman field goal, and a Sebastian Savage electrify. 99-yard interception return to put North Carolina State on top of North Carolina, 24-7. to We'll be back with some final thoughts right after we pause now for a word from your local station. North Carolina State winning over North Carolina 24 to 7 at Carter Finley Stadium. Our most valuable players this afternoon for North Carolina State, Sebastian Savage. For North Carolina, injured linebacker Tommy Thigpen is part of the Schick Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program. Schick will donate $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference approved plan. Schick Tracer, the only razor which flexes to trace every curve on your face. Down on the sidelines, Mike Hogwood standing by with North Carolina State quarterback. Back Jeff Bender. Yeah, Jeff came in and looked like you'd been playing for a long time. What'd you feel like when you came in there for Terry Jordan? I was uh, real nervous until all the players started telling me it was just like practice, and then I was like, just another game. Great job today, and on the money on those touchdown passes. Thanks. I mean, the line just gave me plenty of protection today, and the receivers, they ran crisp routes, and all I had to do was just throw the ball, and that's... All right. Congratulations, Jeff. The redshirt freshman, one cool customer for NC State, Jeff Bender, the quarterback. Thank you very much, Mike. And we're going to return after these messages from North Carolina State University and the University of North Carolina. 
But Carolina State extends their mastery over North Carolina to four straight games as they defeat the Char Heels 24 to 7. Their record now stands at 4 and 0. North Carolina at 2 and 1. Next week on most of these same JP Sports stations, our Exxon ACC game of the week right here at Carter Finley Stadium as these same North Carolina State Wolfpack players will take on the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. We hope you join us for that game. 54,000 looked on today, and there you see some of our technical crew that did such an outstanding job of bringing you the pictures of today's game. Up here in the booth, John Madry, our statistician, Roger Knight, our spotter, Kathy Campbell, our stage manager, and we thank them for their fine job. JP Sports personnel outfitted by Champion Products. The final score, 24-7 North Carolina State over North Carolina for Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. I'm Steve Martin saying good afternoon. You've been watching JP Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. The Wolfpack wins 24-7.